Good evening. Hello? Good evening. Testing? Testing one, two. I'm in two. Go ahead. Testing one, two. Check, 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 check. In all realms of testing. What about here? Testing one, two. Hmm, testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Testing, testing. Am I good? Testing one, two. Check. Jeremy said something Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three, one, two, three. Check, check, check. I got. Testing one, two. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Hello. Well, out there, I know that you can hear me, or at least I think that you can hear me. This is Harlan Johnson. We got Jeremy Holmes and Alan Muhlenweg up in the press box here in the great city of Cleveland, Oklahoma, bringing you Friday Night Bulldogs once again. And it's almost time for the kickoff. In fact, there's the whistle, Jeremy. Well, and hopefully you guys can hear me out there. I know Harlan's coming through. This will be Kuita. This is the start of the kick. Here's a pooch kick to start off. And it's fielded easily by number two. I believe that was Hayden Ford. So the Bulldogs will have the ball first and ten on the Cleveland, about 37-yard line. Having a little trouble adjusting our sights up here. But glad you guys – have joined us for Friday Night Bulldogs. As Harlan's already says, Jeremy Holmes, Harlan Johnson, and Alan Muhlenweg tonight here in Cleveland, America, and we're just about to get started with the Bulldogs' first drive of the game. And uh, Jeremy, for everybody at home, uh, we'll just have to take it easy on the coaches as they can probably hear us over there tonight. Uh, so well, we'll try to do our best. It's going to be number 44, Roman Rodriguez, from the Wildcat formation to start off the first drive. A little low snap. Rodriguez is going to throw, looking to go way downfield, and he is leveled right when he throws it by number, look like number 68. Not sure what that name is, but. We were really fortunate. That ball landed in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. Still trying to adjust some sound here as the Bulldogs are uh, huddling up. It'll bring second down and 10 after that play there. And. Hopefully you can start to hear Alan Muhlenweg come into the conversation. Yes, uh, thanks, Harlan. Yeah, it's looking good out here tonight. And, uh, wow, really impressed with the Wagner faithful out here tonight. I think we may actually have more Wagner people in the stands than uh, Cleveland people in the stands. Here's a pitch out to Evett. Evett tries to get to the outside. And the Cleveland defense does a pretty good job right there as far as containing Evett. Um, that's probably not fair to say that word, contain. But uh, Still on gained that play. six on that play. <laughs> so, yeah, if six yards is containment, I think we'll take that all night long. Yeah, contain, uh, Jeremy, not a word that we've used much this season. I think we talked about it a little bit uh, last week when it concerns Evett as he has uh, just so much – racked up so many yards on the season already and touchdowns for that matter. Here's a third and about four. This is Woodson up under center, man in motion. Handoff straight up the middle. This is Rodriguez. Going and nowhere quickly. There was a collision in the backfield. Actually, he ran into one of his own linemen. And, Allen, that, uh, that's never going to help you when you're trying to pick up some tough uh, inside yards. And appreciate your mouse meat. Anna Dickinson listening. Friday Night Bulldogs, like she normally does, says that everything's coming over loud and clear, so we appreciate her in our chat room. And we have a punt on a fourth and four, number four, Justice Beats. Oh. Snap, skips to him. He's able to get it and hangs a punt high in the air. Takes a little bit of a Bulldog bounce, and the ball will roll dead at the 37-yard line. Almost disastrous there. Yeah, it's a it's a really slow uh, start for the Wagner Bulldogs. Not much going offensively. A little miscommunication on the backfield, and then the uh, the snap there's dribbling into the punter. Not a whole lot going on on that one. 
I tell you what, Jeremy, it was a great call to say 37-yard line. I'm looking out there and going, there's, there's yard markers out there. It's, uh, it for is, those of you guys at home, it's, it's a little tough to see from the press box. It is a little tough to see. The grass has definitely died already here. Uh, it's natural grass here. We're not used to seeing that as far as uh, Bulldog fans at home. So here's quarterback for Cleveland on a first and ten play. He's going to take it himself on a draw, and he is met in the backfield by number – Looks like that's number 50 for the Bulldogs. That is Wyatt Probst. And it was interesting there, Jeremy, to see uh, the quarterback for Cleveland kind of just run straight into uh, the Bulldog defense that time around. Yeah, we're, see, I'm sure you could probably hear the band in the background. We're going to close that off a little bit. Maybe it won't be so loud. Adds to the atmosphere, though, boys. Here's a second and 12 play for Cleveland. Quarterback's going to throw this time over the middle and almost intercepted. Looks like he completed it. After the Wagner linebacker tipped it, the Cleveland receiver was able to haul it in. And I don't really know how he came up with that because it looked like the quarterback for Cleveland was maybe aiming for the uh, Wagner defense there, trying to throw the pass to them. Ricocheted off the defender, and as Allen said, uh, the Cleveland receiver able to come up with it somehow. And I'm not sure that's how it was drawn up in the playbook, but, you know. <laughs> we'll I, I was going to say we'll take it. They'll take it, <laughs> anything they can get there. And uh, so here they back are on third down, third and about six to go here. There's the snap. Quarterback has it, runs to his left, throws back over to his right, tipped up by the Bulldogs yeah, again right. and caught by the Cleveland receiver, but he doesn't get anywhere, Jeremy. That's two back-to-back. Nice defensive plays, even though the reception was made. That was Hawkins on the previous play that almost coming up with an uh, with the interception. That time, Cantrell goes up high, bats the ball up in the air, and uh, I think that I think Cleveland's a little lucky that they're going to just be able to punt this one away. And there's the snap for the punt. The punter has it. The ball is up. Not a great kick, geared towards the sideline. We'll see where the referee spots it. Didn't look like it went real far. He's still walking forward, still going forward at the half line. Now Bulldogs going to have it at about the 48-yard line uh, in Cleveland territory. Yeah. Well, they, they definitely have completed their scouting report because if they've seen anything from the Bulldog, uh, either kickoff return or punt return, very dangerous. But, Allen, when you do that kind of thing, you try to punt away from the – would be returner. Sometimes what just happened happens. We're talking about high school kickers and not notorious for having great aim and great legs. So I think you're taking a risk when you take a chance like that. Woodson up under center. Here's a handoff. Oh, fumble in the backfield. Able to catch. This is Evett trying to get that corner. And, and it looks like he'll be able to get back to the line of scrimmage or close to it, anyways. I think he's actually going to pick up maybe a yard on that play um, as it uh, looked. At the beginning, that was <laughs> that was just not a very good play from the start. Not a good play from the start. Evan actually does a great job of picking the ball up and turning nothing into something there, uh, getting back at least to the line of scrimmage, maybe maybe half a yard more than that. Second down, and uh, we'll say nine here uh, moving forward. Generous nine. <laughs> we're back. We're back to the wildcat on this formation. That's Roman Rodriguez. He's got Evett, that's the man in motion, and Lee in the backfield. Swings it over to Evett. Evett with a little bit of open field. And a nice, nice play by the Cleveland defense as Evett had a little bit of open uh, area to make a move. Man stayed at home. He broke down and waited for some help. Jeremy, it's awful early so far, but uh, the Cleveland defense has maybe been a little surprising here at the early in the game. Uh, a couple of different times where Evett's had a little bit of space. Not a lot, but a little bit. We're used to seeing them break some of those, uh, and so we'll see what happens moving forward. But so far, the Cleveland defense able to withstand uh, the Bulldogs' offensive attack. And it's Coach Muleleg on a third to five. What are you doing here? Uh, you got the best running back in the state. Give him the ball. And that's exactly what they do. Here's Evan. And he's up the side. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> we don't even have to go. <laughs> we don't even have to do the 25, 20, 15, 10. We didn't have time to do it. <laughs> You know, I was going to make the comment, you know, Wagner is making it look easy for him by putting the ball on the turf so much there the first two uh, series. But then Everett, Everett just breaks it into the house, and he's gone. Yeah, and Alan, Jeremy, is not privy to our previous situations where 
When Evan gets past it, we just call it. We just stop talking, let it speak for itself. He gone. Hopefully you guys got a great shot of that at home. That was Lawrence Evett from about 40 yards away for the score. I, I don't believe he was touched, gentlemen, as Tanner Rowland sets up and Chase Barnett, his holder, rolling with the extra point. Snapped by Taylor Gibson, I believe. Snap the hold, kick is up, and Roland splits the uprights. We're four minutes into the first quarter, eight minutes on the dot left. Wagner Bulldogs seven, the Cleveland Tigers zero. And Jeremy, it's good to see the Wagner Bulldogs offense push it in that time. The second, second uh, possession that they've had in the game. First one didn't look real great. Uh, really, the second one started off not looking real great. Uh, fumble, Evett picks it up, able to get back to the line of scrimmage, really nothing more than that. All of a sudden, Allen, Coach Allen, as we're going to call him, uh, calls it, says give it to the best best player in the state maybe, uh, best in 4A for sure, and uh, he breaks it for the long run. We were just talking about how maybe the Cleveland, uh, I'm going to keep calling them the Indians, <laughs> Called them that last week, Cleveland Tigers. We talked about their defense maybe being a little tougher than uh, what we expected. And then, again, Coach M able to call it uh, from up here in the press box, give it to Evett, and Evett scores. Well, we usually when you talk about a running game, it's just wearing down that, that front four of the defense. And that time they were able to get the containment, and he was able to break into the secondary. And once he was there, nobody was going to touch him. And looking in the chat room, we got a couple people. We'll uh, come back to you after this kick. This is number 38, Tanner Rowland. The ensuing kickoff after the 41-yard touchdown run by Lawrence Evett. Line drive kick. It's going to be fielded at about the 15-yard line. And nice block by one of the Tigers and a nice tackle by number three, A.J. Freed. That was a good run back. I was a little surprised he was able to turn that around the corner. But, yeah, his blockers set up very nicely and gave him that corner. Uh, gained another about 15 yards off that really harsh block. Yeah, well, the block was on number 15, Chris Chirac. And uh, I'm not sure who the, uh, the one to block it was, uh, but Chirac was the on the receiving end of that pretty – uh, pretty brutal block. So, 7.52 left in this first quarter. Here's the, the almost said Indians again. Here's the Tigers on their second drive of the game. Little Quarterback keeper. Well, you know, Jeremy, it is that time of the year for the World Series, you know, and uh, maybe just a little bit of unconscious hoping that the Cleveland Indians would be there. <laughs> Unfortunately not, and uh, we do have the Tigers here tonight as I had to double check here online to make sure that was – the Cleveland mascot. As I pointed out, it was written on the side of the uh, uh, field house. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Right behind the end zone. Yeah, That's... that was after I looked it up, by the way. <laughs> just saying, just throwing it out there. That's Derek Reeves, the quarterback tonight for the Tigers. He picked up five on that. We'll give him four, second and six for Reeves. Here's Reeves, keeps it himself. Ooh. Reeves with a big hole, and he is still on his feet as he gets into Bulldog territory. Reeves able to throw, show some nifty moves. He gets all the way into the, like the 30, 37, 37. Well, I think you're right on the second time. 36-yard line. Reeves, that was a great option read, first of all, and then he did the, he did the rest of the work from there. Yeah, Jeremy, it was a good run there. And, you know, just not knowing what to expect from the Tigers here, um, you know, early on in the game, Jeremy, I'm looking at their schedule. And they've, they've got some wins here. Uh, most recent win was last week over Miami. They beat them 47 to 30. Um, so you well, never know by you the see. scores, but they have, they have the win there. They've, they've got the weapons, it looks like. They, that, the Reeves at QB, his, man, he fought for every yard there. Here's a read option again. This time he hands off to his up back, and he's going to make good yardage on a first down play. I want to come yeah, back he, to our uh, chat room here. Allen is uh, have a lot of people that are – uh, logging in, and looks like a few people are having trouble with the sound. Thought that it was coming through loud and clear. We appreciate Cody Allison. Cody Allison is listening from Georgia tonight. Saw him. Saw Beth Brown. Alan, I know you know Beth Brown. I believe she was staying home tonight, and she's listening also at home. We're going to miss Beth's camera work tonight. <laughs> she normally has it there on the sideline making sure we've got great shots there on Facebook. Reeves able to wheel it out to his uh, 
uh, wide receiver on a second and five play, and he'll uh, get close to first down it's yardage. Be close. They may have to come out and mark it. Uh, they're giving it to him. First down. First down, ball is le resting on the 25-yard line. And right now, Harlan, the Tigers are answering uh, the Evett 41-yard touchdown. Yeah, and this is a big drive for them to come back and uh, make sure the Bulldogs are not able to establish momentum. And that's what the Tigers are trying to take away from as they come back to the line of scrimmage here. Well, one of the big things they're doing right now is they're eating a lot of clock with these running plays. They're not stopping. They're just keeping on moving. It's keeping that Wagner defense on the field for an awful long time. There's Reeves again, weaving a little bit through traffic and picks up positive yardage. Uh, maybe a pickup. Well, he's going to get – we'll give him two on that play, a second and eight, and we'll get a couple more names for you on the, the Tiger side of the ball. Number 28 is Dakota Hewitt. Hewitt and Reeves uh, typically in the backfield for the Tigers. This will be a second and eight play. Ball resting just inside the 24-yard line for the Tigers. Reeves from the shotgun. It's Hewitt in the backfield with him. We just talked about the both of them. Reeves going to throw it this time. Reeves looking downfield. He's got a man open. Oh, and he just overthrew him. Allen, he had him. It was one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, you saw he had a little bit of wheels because he uh, they put it up there for him. That's Chase McWirt. And uh, he had two or three yards on him. He had some steps on whoever was covering them or on, on the corner. Yeah, it looks like he just had maybe a difficult time trying to find the ball there a little bit. Maybe just a little overthrown as well. Uh, but long story short, uh, the Tigers are going to be continuing on third down here, third and about eight to go. Reeves again with Hewitt and now number 14, Darren Dell, in the backfield with him. And here's Reeves on the quarterback keeper straight up the middle looking for first down yardage. It's going to be close. I think he got it. I think he did too. See where they spot the ball? Looks like the ball is going to be right inside the 15-yard line. If that's the case, it's going to be a first down. It and is. And they mark it. The sticks are on the move as the Tigers deep into Bulldog territory. Ball at about the 14-yard line. First and 10 from the 14. Again, they're chipping away at the clock. This drive has taken three and a half minutes so far. When you consider that the previous three drives took up four minutes, they're keeping that defense out there for a long time. Be Reeves in the backfield in the shotgun. And here's a handoff to his up back, number 14. That is Dell and Allen, the defensive lineman of the Bulldogs were there to stop him at right at the line of scrimmage. I think they're starting to pick up on that option, being able to track that football a little bit better than maybe they were earlier on. I think they may have been surprised by that because uh, I don't think we've seen a whole lot of that this season. They're going to get him forward progress uh, looking at the scoreboard. They, they're spotting it. At least they're spotting it at the 12. Uh, maybe they've got a little bit better view than we do, but uh, they, got, they actually gave – Gave him two on the play, second and eight from the 12-yard line. Again, Reeves. They don't snap the ball. They're going to have it. Uh, they got it off in time. Here's a screen pass to the wide receiver. Makes an inside move. and that's nice yards on that one, too. Chase McWirt. They're going to be down to third and two or third and three, it looks like. I think that ball is maybe at the six. I'm telling you, these lines are not <laughs> – I don't think they've uh, painted them for the last couple of weeks as they are fading into the grass, uh, almost camouflage out there, Harlan. Well, Jeremy, it's only, maybe it's the uh, whole beard theory in the playoffs. You know, you get a win, you don't paint the lines. Let's not mess with anything. You know, maybe that's the theory behind that. Scoreboard puts the ball at the six-yard line. It's going to be third and two for the Tigers. And here's the quarterback on a little – oh, just misread what his receiver was doing. I was about to say, I think they're on different pages there. The receiver was coming inside, and I think they were looking for that outside cut, and it didn't happen. Yeah, the receiver definitely was going on a slant, and the quarterback was looking on an outs. And uh, if you know anything about football, slants and outs don't mix. <laughs> no. So the ball will still be at the six on a fourth and two play. Looks like they're going to go for it. Yeah. Um, whether they just want to, uh, you know, take that chance early or maybe they're 
uh, kicking team is, is not that accurate. We're not sure, but I think you're right, Alan. I think they're going to go for it. Reeves is alone in the backfield in a shotgun formation. Looks Here's Reeves. Back. Boy, he's got all kinds of time. Now he throws it into the end zone. He just kind of threw that one away. I don't think he had anybody open. Turnover on downs. Well, and it looked like there for a minute that he might have been able to uh, – Make a, make a run for it to the corner. I thought he was going to break that out to the outside. He had about five to ten yards out there before anybody closed in on him. And looks like a few people are asking about the, the noise in the background. Well, we are just right outside where the Wagner High School band is playing, so maybe that's what you're hearing. And uh, hopefully we will we'll try to uh, get a little bit of that out so we can come across a little clearer. Over on downs, first and ten, ball on their own six-yard line. Woodson up under center. Here's the inside handoff. This is Hawkins. And Hawkins stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. I believe that was by number 14 for the Tigers. Number 14 is Darren Dale. We've already called his name on the offensive side. Now he's stepping up and playing some defense. And, Jeremy, as we're accustomed to there, Hawkins keeping those legs moving and turning, not able to get away from him that time, uh, but keeps it out of the end zone there. Uh, so a little bit of space. He's actually, we're not going to say he lost half a yard, but he, uh, he lost a quarter of a yard, I guess. <laughs> so we're going to still place it at the six. And Woodson from the shotgun on this second and ten play. That's Freeth, the man in motion. Freeth gets the call. Handoff. And Freeth trying to get around that corner, but good pursuit by the I think he may have gained a yard or two, not much. And, Jeremy, we saw that play call last week a few times, and it worked really well early on, not working yet. But with, if I remember correctly, that was kind of the case last week as well. The end around doesn't work, and then later on uh, they turned it into something big. Here is a third and about – we're going to call it nine. We'll give, Freeth, we'll give Freeth a yard and a half on that. So we'll call it third and nine for the Bulldogs. The ball is at the seven-yard line. Here's number five, Jake Woodson from the shotgun. Woodson with the backside screen, and oh, my, that was almost dangerous. Well, actually, it was dangerous. It was almost disastrous. Yeah, it was almost a pick six. There was nobody between him and the end zone. If, he, if that lineman had uh... – it hands worth anything, he would have pulled that in and taken it to the house. And taking it to the house meant that he was going to take about three steps and be in the end zone. Yeah. He could have fallen over forward and been in the end zone, I think, from there. That was a, that was a backside screen and uh, read well by the Tiger defense. So it's a fourth down. Beats is standing in his own end zone. And another low snap. This Oh, that was close. He may have gotten a tip on that one. Wow. Beats, Beats was uh, did a little bit of magic just to get that out of there. Well, having to pick the ball up out of the grass doesn't help your punter be able to elevate his foot to kick it well. And then when you've got a person running in on you because you, you take more time, I don't think people understand how fast you really got to get that ball released when you're punting the ball. And uh, when the ball's trickling into you, that eats up all your time. So, yeah, he did well to get rid of that. But they're going to start, looks like, right on the 28, 29 of the Wagner Bulldogs. We're in the closing seconds of the first quarter. This first quarter is brought to you by Cherokee Temps. And we'll get back to Cherokee Temps after this play. Here's a quarterback, uh, the running back, straight up the middle, carrying some Bulldog tacklers with him. I believe that was number 28 for the Tigers, number 28 is Dakota Hewitt. Cherokee Temps Incorporated, they're a temporary employment agency. They have an office in Muskogee that services Muskogee, Wagner, and surrounding areas. And they even have an office in Chickasha that services that area. They offer temporary and permanent employment and payroll and employee leasing services. And that operations manager is John Randolph. John, with a couple of daughters, so, oh, one daughter in high school, one that had graduated last year and uh, been a longtime supporter of Wagner Bulldogs. And we're back to the action, and there's that same play that we've seen a couple of times. And another tip. And almost the same exact uh, result of it. I think that was Rodriguez on the coverage yep. able well, to tip it up. 
Roman uh, Rodriguez was able to get the tip on it, and then uh, I think the pass was actually designed for the uh, receiver tracking in behind him. So no gain on the play with a third, third and, and five. Four. Yeah, third and five, and this will be Reeves from the shotgun. Reeves, his own option read, and that time it was read by number 50, Wyatt Probst, as Reeves was just able to get to the 20-yard line, but he'll come up about two yards short. It's going to be interesting to see what they choose to do here in fourth and two. And that's the end of the first quarter. Your Wagner Bulldogs, seven, Cleveland Tigers, zero. Again, that first quarter brought to you by Cherokee Tips Incorporated. We appreciate it. The support of John Randolph, the operations manager at Cherokee Temps. Appreciate their support of Friday Night Bulldogs bringing to you free, live, and worldwide. As the teams go all the way down to the other side of the, of the field, um, as we get prepared to start this second quarter, hope everything is working for you guys well at home. And looks like we're having a little bit of trouble at home with uh, video and audio. If not, you might have to close it out and refresh because um, we're not reading that we're having problems on our end. So um, hopefully, hopefully we can get those things taken care of. That's right. And we've been trying to tweak the audio here uh, in the press box. And it looks like I'm really, really loud now. Uh, so, again, still working on it, still trying to tweak it, still trying to get it better. Uh, we'll continue to do that as the teams are uh, coming back out for the start of the second quarter here. And, uh, Alan, they're lined up there. This will be a fourth and four. And we're going to call it fourth and two. The scoreboard says four. They're going to go for it. It's fourth and two for the Tigers. Reeves from the shotgun. Right up the middle, and they – Met him there. Number 42, K.J. Lee, and number 61, Derek Marshall. Uh, he got nowhere. I'm not even sure if he got back to the, uh, the line of scrimmage. And looks like we may have a uh, little trouble at home that we're seeing. The video is on. Okay. Well, we're trying to, trying to keep up with our chat room. Got some text rolling in, making sure everything's all right. Um, you guys – Keep it coming, and we'll try to make some adjustments if we need to here. This will be a first and ten play for the Bulldogs. Uh, this will be their first drive of the second quarter. Woodson up under center as the ball is placed right at the 20-yard line. I formation, Hawkins and Evett. Here's Evett. Evett straight up the middle, and he has met right at the 20. May have gotten to the 21. And this has kind of, kind of been the M.O. of the Tigers, at least on first and second down. Yeah, they've been holding them to uh, not, not a real big gain on first and second down, Jeremy. Uh, and that's, that's a big feat uh, for uh, holding the Bulldogs because we're not used to seeing a whole lot of that, uh, keeping them down and keeping them back, Alan. Well, I don't think that the, the Bulldogs have been playing a real clean football game so far. I think you've seen the ball has hit the dirt quite a bit. Um, a lot of the handoffs have been a little sloppy. We've seen a couple fumbles. Uh, considering we've had three drives, four drives, and the ball has been in the dirt on every single drive, uh, we're making it easy for them right now. So hopefully we can clean that up, and maybe that's what they're talking about right now. It looks like the uh, Wagner Bulldogs have called a timeout. Yeah, and most likely they are talking about that, trying to get it cleaned up. The Bulldogs used to play in a, a lot more smooth type offense. Um, but, Alan, in the first quarter you mentioned a couple of times Cleveland, the Tigers, on the offensive side, able to keep that defense of the Bulldogs out there. And uh, maybe that's the best game plan that they can have coming into the game, keep it out of Evett's hands or the other weapons on the offensive side for the Bulldogs as much as possible, keep that offense on the sideline. Yeah, if you're running the football and you're keeping your, the, your opponent's defense out there, you're keeping their offense from scoring, and that's what they're able to do right now. And so uh, if you're listening, we're still working to tweak the sound a little bit, trying to fix it some. Um, and uh, I, th I think the mine seems really loud, and Alan seems really low, but uh, continue to working on that. Uh, here we got the professional Jeremy Holmes, uh, the professional sound guy here, uh, trying to tweak some things. Uh, we also got word that maybe we sound like we're in a wind tunnel. I promise we're not. Um, it just sounds that way, maybe. 
But we are sitting right above the band, and so there's all of that as well. So. And uh, Bulldogs back to the line of scrimmage now. Looks like they're going to be in the I formation. Woodson's going to ha take the ball under center. Second and nine. Woodson takes the snap. And again. Goes for a handoff here. I don't on the uh, exchange between the center and quarterback. And I guess they're going to call him down there. <laughs> well, if your knee's down, you have control of the ball. It was almost like that play was blown dead by the referees before it even started. Maybe they saw something we didn't. <laughs> not not flag wise, but just hey, you guys need to start over again. Yeah, that's, maybe so. I don't know. Alan jumping on the call, they're able to see it there. Uh, you know, I was looking and uh, didn't catch what happened, but it looks like it's going to be third down uh, for the Bulldogs. They intend to go here. We appreciate the comments rolling in from our uh, chat room. You guys make sure that if we can make some more adjustments mm -hmm. on this sound, we sure will on a third and ten play for the Bulldogs. And now we got a flag coming in. Looks like a delay of game penalty against the Bulldogs. Believe it or not, we've already been through one quarter, and the score is just 7-0 right now. We're just inside the second quarter. And 10:31 uh, left in the second quarter. Wagner Bulldogs seven, Cleveland Tigers zero on a third and now 15 after the penalty. A lot of shifting around for the Bulldog offense. This will be Evett from the Wildcat. Now and we're going to have another starts. penalty. You know, I'm I'm pretty certain that uh, Coach Condit's not going to be very happy with uh, some of the performance right now. There's going to be a lot of adjustments, a lot of chats that are going to happen between now and halftime. Yeah, right now the Bulldogs going in the wrong direction with these penalties. Um, you know, we've got the false start right there. and uh, Just a crucial time as they've already had 15 yards ago and now make it 20. And uh, we'll see what they can do from the shadow of their own end zone. Well, your last three steps to the football, you had a fumble on the snap, you had a delay of game, and now you have the false start. So at some point we got to start figuring this out and getting it uh, straightened up a little bit. For sure, and we'll see what they can do here as the Bulldogs are back to the line of scrimmage now. Looks like Woodson's in with the shotgun formation. Two in the backfield with him, takes the snap. He's looking deep. He's got, uh, looks like Ford there, and the pass falls incomplete, going to bring up fourth down and 20. Really good coverage, tight coverage there, and the ball was thrown really high. Gave him a lot of time to try to get underneath it, but just not a whole lot you can do there. Still making a few adjustments on the sound as uh, you just never know. <laughs> you just never know. Seemed like everything went great last week, uh, hardly any issues at all. And now it looks like I'm almost ready to blast you guys out. Uh, still let us know. And it's a fourth and 20 now for the Bulldogs. Beats in his own end zone again. That time it's blocked, and it is recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. Touchdown, Tigers. Allen, we just talked about that on the last punt. That's number three, Chase McQuirt. He almost got it on the last punt. That time he did get it. I, I couldn't see from here. Did he come in off the left side? Yeah, that left side for some reason on our uh, our our line just wasn't watching him on that side for some reason. So that was number three, Chase McGuirk, who was able to take the block. Sorry, I'm looking at my little speaker volume here, and I think I'm blasting you guys out, but that was – McGuirt with the block and the recovery in the end zone for a touchdown. There's the extra point. It's and good. It is good. Now all of a sudden, Wagner Bulldogs seven, the Cleveland Tigers seven, and we got a ball game. And uh, Jeremy, as we talked about, maybe on the way here, maybe a little surprising uh, here, a tie game with 10-19 uh, left to go in the first half. But uh, anytime, you know, special teams can totally change the way that a game happens, I mean, the way it's played out. Well, if you look at the where we're getting the, the ball in the field, we're not moving it. And then uh, I think even before the game, we were talking around with some people in the community that uh, this was expected to be a blowout. Maybe we just got a little too uh, too big on ourselves coming into this game. The second quarter, it were 10-19 left in this second quarter, brought to you by Runt's Barbecue. Runt's Barbecue just right off the intersection of 51 and 69. If you get the, the hankering for some barbecue, I'm sure they're open right now. If you're in Wagner, America, you can step, stop by Runt's Barbecue. If not, stop by tomorrow and get you some of that good barbecue. 
from Runt's Barbecue. We appreciate their support of Friday Night Bulldogs. That's right. If you're feeling it right now, uh, feel free to go out there. But bring it back home and come back and listen to Friday Night Bulldogs. As we got a good one here, 7-7 seven, seven, uh, with, again, 10-19 left to go in the first half. And uh, the Cleveland Tigers getting set to kick it off. Jeremy, that's number two. What's his name? That's Tyler Miles. Tyler Miles with the kickoff after that blocked punt for a touchdown. Short pooch kick, and it is fielded at about the 28-yard line, and he is dropped right there by McWirt. McWirt, uh, special teams monster right now. All over the field. He's uh, creating havoc for the Wagner Bulldogs right now, that's for sure. And that noise that you probably are listening to right now is the Wagner High School drum line and now they've stopped just when I said something so it should be pretty quiet at home right now. All right, that's right well they got to be quiet because the Bulldogs out there huddling up right you don't want to uh, make sure everybody gets the call in, inside the huddle and see what they can come out with here. Big time uh, series for the Bulldogs offense to really uh, snatch back the momentum from the home team Cleveland Tigers. It's number 44 Roman Rodriguez from the Wildcat. Rodriguez will take it himself over the left side. Picks up a couple Bounces of blocks. Space. Oh, he could break it. Into the Tiger territory. Takes nice a couple. Nice 32-yard run up the side there. Big time run right there by Rodriguez. And way to finish it off running backwards a little bit. Well, I'll say running pushed backwards a little bit. Uh, but 32-yard gain. Kind of taped his way down there once he got around and Kind of took some of the tacklers with him as he uh, came out of bounds there around the uh, 40 of the Cleveland Tigers. Ball is at the 40-yard line of the Tigers with the Bulldogs on a first and 10. Trying to answer back from a blocked punt for touchdown from the Tigers. So this will be Rodriguez from the Wildcat. Another Trouble fumble. Snap. Rodriguez tried to make the best of it, and he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Another loss of two. And uh, we're continuing to work on that sound. Uh, again, the sound tech, Jeremy Holmes, getting after it there. Uh, Bulldogs have the ball. It's going to be second down. looks like about 13, Alan. Yeah, coming back uh, to that, that last play, the snap comes up, and uh, Woodson just couldn't get or I guess it was Rodriguez, couldn't get his hands on it. And now they've got it at the line of scrimmage now. There's the snap. Rodriguez looks um, for the fake, and there's going to be a flag on the play. Going to be a false start against the Bulldogs. Move them back five more yards. Makes it second and 18 as they'll uh, try it again, but from a little longer distance. be at the 48-yard line of the uh, – I keep, again, on the Indians. Tigers, and it sounds like i got a little popping noise going on here. So we are really trying to work out these sound problems. Yeah, just be a little – Coming out of the shotgun. Um, you know, it looked like – looked like when we received that – our uh, running back was going to take that up one side, and the quarterback had him going to the other. Some more miscommunication in the backfield. Now we're back into Wagner Bulldog territory, 48 of the Wagner Bulldogs, and we are looking at about a third and 20, it looks like. Yeah, and the Bulldogs are going to have a long way to go here on third and 18. And, um, Alan, what, you know, coming back to Coach Muenweg here, what, what's the call? You got to pass now. You've got too much yards there that you got to make up. It's not a. It's not a third and five. And Bulldogs back to the line of scrimmage now. Back it looks like pass. Rodriguez. He's going to throw it up. He's, He's got, got a receiver him. over there, over the shoulder, and it's incomplete. Going to bring up fourth down. Intended for Ford on the play. Not able to bring it in as there was a pretty solid coverage there from the Tigers. I don't think the Tigers could ask for a better game right now. Um, you know, I think they had to play an absolute perfect game and hope to catch the Bulldogs on an off day, and that's what they've done so far. Um, the Bulldogs are lining up for the punt now. Yeah, that pass was pretty much on the money, but the defense was right there and was able to cover it well. 
That's going to be Beats that's lining up for the punt here for the Bulldogs. He's awaiting the snap. Now he has a little low snap once again. Gets the kick, high kick up in the air. And it looks like there's going to be a fair catch taken by the Cleveland Tigers. That he's at about the 28 or 29. And that was a number 12, Derek Reeves, on the fair catch. And it's going to be first and 10 for the Tigers. 7.51 left to go in the first half. Still 7-7 seven, seven here. And, uh, Alan, I don't know if you could tell, uh, where are they going to take over at? Looks like on the scoreboard, they're going to give it the 22-yard line. Really can't tell from up here in the press box. I know we've talked about that uh, already. Maybe the <laughs> scoreboard isn't completely right. We're just going with that. Um, but no less, the Tigers are at the line of scrimmage. Reeves has him in the shotgun. He's got one back in the backfield with him. Four receivers split out, two on each side. Takes it, hands it off up the middle to his running back. Not a lot of room there, able to keep the legs moving and gain a couple. Looks like he got about three or four on that one. No. I think if, uh, if we had the stats to look at, I think we're looking at the uh, the run versus pass plays that the uh, Cleveland uh, Tigers are calling. I think they're doing three runs for every pass play they've got in there and uh, just been able to move the ball pretty well on the ground. And uh, Tigers... It's Reeves in the shotgun once again, has it, gives it up the middle one more time. Bulldogs right there, but he's able to get away from them and gain a few more yards on the little spin. He was able to get the first down on that one. And so the Tigers able to put together a little bit of a drive here, waiting to see where the referees spot the ball and mark it. And it looks like going to be a, yeah, it's going to be a first and ten here. First down and 10 for the Tigers. A little bit of confusion as to where they're going to set the ball, and the chains finally get moved there. Tigers huddling up to talk it over. Uh, under seven minutes in the first half to go now. Tigers coming back to the line of scrimmage. One more time. All right, the Tigers have it. There's the handoff to the left. Not a whole lot of running room there as the Bulldogs able to bring him down. Maybe a gain of one on the play. Yep, about that. It's going to bring up third down and about five to go. And I uh, want to give a shout out as Jeremy is pointing me over to uh, the chat here. And we want to say hello to Beth Brown, Champ Mom 2011. Uh, thanks so much for listening. And uh, appreciate that comment about the uh, che cheerleader flying into the screen. Uh, they're certainly got the acrobatics going on out there, supporting the Wagner Bulldogs. And uh, the Tigers have it back to the line of scrimmage now. There's the snap. He's looking to throw, does get the throw off. It goes, catches the ball, but he's right out of bounds, and he's short of the first down. And uh, it did look like he was farther up on the, you know, the other side over there, but the lines judge on our side of the field has, uh, has him about, well, he's moving now, but he's got him about three yards short there, Alan. It's going to be fourth down, and uh, maybe we'll give him two there, a long two yards to go on fourth down. 5.06 in counting, left to go in the first half. And for those of you guys listening, we're still working on those sound issues. Not real sure exactly uh, what's happening there. Not completely sure if you could hear Alan at all. Um, but uh, he's been jumping in there, chiming in. So hopefully you've been hearing it. He's been giving you some good stuff out there. 
uh, for the Friday night Bulldog crowd. Uh, timeout was taken by the Cleveland Tigers once again. I've uh, been trying to keep you updated here. 4.54 left to go in the half. 7-7 seven, seven is the score. It's going to be a big time fourth down coming up here for the Cleveland Tigers. Initially looked like they were going to line up to go for it. Uh, Allen, uh, first half, not a lot of yardage, but the Bulldogs have been able to stop them before. What do you do? Do you, do you run it here? Do you punt? Do you throw a pass? What? Well, I think they're passing, and it's not been very effective, so I think you got to watch the run. I think you can take your chances. Their passing game hasn't been very effective. It looks like they're coming back out. It looks like they're going into the punt formation. So. And so, yeah, it looks like they're lined up to punt, and uh, maybe I'm that's – surprised to see a fake right here. They're, they're moving the ball well. Um, they're at the midfield, so it's not a huge gamble in terms of field position. Um, they obviously have some good athletes there. Not sure why they're bringing the chains out there. Uh, we haven't ran a play since it was about a long yard two yards ago. Yard and a half shy of the first down marker. And uh, not really sure why they called the line and went out there. The chains crew out there to, to measure that out. <laughs> and uh, Alan, I don't know if you could hear the announcer over on the other side, but he's giving props to the chain gang. He said they're the best looking in the state of Oklahoma. I don't know about all that. I don't want to weigh in on that, but I thought that was interesting coming from the PA. <laughs> Definitely above the pay grade as the Tigers out now in punt formation once again. Again, I think you watch out for the uh, – I think you play for the fake here. I think you play for the fake and the hard count. And Bulldogs fans, you got Evett back deep. Here comes the punt. Kind of turns sideways and gets the punt off. Kicks it away from Evett. Probably a good idea, and it's going to roll pass. dead. And We're in the middle of uh, teams switching out there for offense and defense. Uh, just a moment to holler at the uh, Wagner cross country team as they head to regionals tomorrow. Coach Hemingway has done a great job with their, their first season. And as a ex cross country runner in high school myself, uh, good luck to you guys. Go out there and run hard. Very good. Always good to give shout outs to the other teams and other activities at uh, Wagner High School as we have so many that are doing awesome things. And uh, the Bulldogs have a back-to-the-line scrimmage now. I formation looks like he's giving them the hard count, does Woodson. Looks to the sideline, 10 seconds, under 10 seconds on the Did play have clock. a couple jumps there. Let's see what happens. There's the snap. Hands it off. Not a lot of room that time for the Bulldog offense on the ground, Allen. No, again, the Cleveland Tiger defense has done a really good job of containing us to just a handful of yards. You know, uh, they're calling it three yards, so we're looking at second and seven coming from around our own 18. And, Alan, you said the Cleveland Tiger defense doing a good job of containing us. I, I got to tell you, when it comes to barbecue, I can't contain myself <laughs> as uh, we want to give another shout-out to our second-quarter sponsor, Runt's Barbecue. Make sure and go see them uh, and uh, cure your hunger needs, if you will. Bulldogs have it back to the line of scrimmage. Single back formation this time. Woodson gives the toss to Evett. Evett runs to his right, going towards the sideline, still on his feet, pushed out of bounds after a nice little gain there. See where they spot the ball. It looks like it's going to be around the 25, which is going to be close to a first down. Evett not quite able to break it out. Not quite going to get there for the first down, like I don't think. Looks like it's going to be a yard or two short there. Waiting for the Lions judge to sort of reset his line. Looks like it's going to be several yards short there, Alan. It looked like he was closer to me from our vantage point. We've said that a couple times now, but the Lions judge has him about third and three here, a long three yards uh, to go for the Bulldogs. Under four minutes now to go in the first half. Bulldogs coming back to the line of scrimmage here once again. There's the snap. He's going to keep it himself. Up the middle, not a whole lot of room, pushing forward, 
Still trying to push forward. Finally, the referee blows a whistle. Doesn't look like he got there. Again, it's going to depend on the spot here. It's going to be fourth down. It looks like about a yard. Fourth down and about a yard. And, Allen, we talked about it for the Tigers. What do the Bulldogs do here on fourth down? You think that they're going to punt. I think you got to – I mean, you're, you're fourth and one for on your own 25. And with one yard like to go, go for it. maybe you do the hard count here, but he is going under center. Looks like he is trying the hard count. See well, if they can catch him in the eye formation here. He looks back to the sideline. Eight seconds on the play clock, and now they're going to – Talk it over here, most likely bringing out the punt team after the timeout. We'll see what happens. No, you're talking about the other activities. Also, a shout out to, shout out to the drama program there at Choctaw High School, my alma mater, uh, awaiting the results from state right now. So good luck to them as well. And right now, both teams are huddling up, looking over their, their playbooks, figuring out what they're going to do on this next. Uh... And it looks like we just got word that drama took sixth place in state today uh, that is quite an accomplishment sixth place is a great great accomplishment way to go uh, and shout out to miss ellis and miss govin and uh, the coaches there for the drama program at wagner high school yeah and once again you can probably hear the band in the background just another activity at wagner high school that we have to point to so many things it's not Certainly not just about athletics at Wagner High School uh, for the Bulldog faithful out there. We all know that. Uh, <laughs> as Jeremy's giving me nice little looks there, uh, he's still working on the sound. If you're missing his voice a little bit, uh, again, our professional sound man that travels everywhere with us. You just thought he only did play-by-play. -play. Uh, he actually is the sound fixer-upper, we'll call it, and uh, that's the technical term. And uh, maybe it looks like he's almost ready to rejoin us here as the Bulldogs have it fourth and one on their own side of the field here on about the 25-yard line. 3.13 left to go, and they're going to come back out in the I formation here. And there he goes. He's gone. That's Evett, ladies and gentlemen. One more time. We've said it before. We don't even have to talk about it. Once he gets past him, he's gone. And uh and, uh, you know, the Cleveland Tigers were cheating up on the line of scrimmage really tight on that one. And so once he got past that initial uh, contact at the line of scrimmage, he was gone. And hopefully, well, let me see if you guys can hear me. Uh, I think we may be back. Hopefully we can get everyone back to a good sound and without any kind of wind tunnel noise or anything like that. <laughs> Boy, that, I believe that was about 75 yards for Mr. Lawrence Evans. And uh, Harlan, I think you even turned your back and not even looked to make the series. He made it to the end zone. But I think we're pretty sure, pretty confident that he did. Pretty sure, yeah. I mean, once Allen said that he was past uh, uh, one guy, it was turn around, it's over, he's, he's gone, it's a touchdown. He's up and it's good. PAT does go through for rolling there. And uh, Jeremy – Fourth and one in your own territory, your own 25-yard line. Three minutes to go in the first half. What a gutsy call uh, by the Bulldogs coaches. Of course, again, we've talked about Evett. When you have him, give the ball to him. But that's a tough decision to make early on in the game when you're tied 7-7 and things haven't necessarily been going your way early on. Well, I think what was going on there is a great play call because the uh, Wagner offense right now has not really had a whole lot going for them. So I think that was more, hey, we still, we've we got confidence in you tonight. No matter how how bad it's been going up to this point, we're going to line up and we're going to play ball. And 75 yards later, we score. Yeah, and uh, there's no reason not to have confidence. As the entire season, we've seen it over and over. Uh, Bulldogs able to come up big when they're needed, uh, when they've needed to do so. And, uh, uh, you know, we've just seen it again, over and over again. Uh, the defense has been there when needed, and the offense has answered the bell uh, when needed as well, Alan. Well, we got 3:01 left in the uh, second quarter until halftime. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the Cleveland Tigers change up their uh, offensive strategy here with three minutes left because, uh, obviously, uh, if they run the ball the entire time, they're going to run out of time. They've got two timeouts left. And rolling out there for the kickoff for the Bulldogs. The ball is on the tee now, waiting for the official sign. He's got it now. Here comes the kick. Kicks it down. It's going to be filled at about the 12 yard line. McQuirk. It's McQuirk. McQuirk on there. Good goes kick. towards the left, Good tries return. to get to the sideline. And like uh, got it out to about the 32 or 33 yard line. Again, kind of having a ballpark where that actually is, but you know. 
I think it is started at about the 33-yard line, and the Tigers will have the ball there. It's 2.55 left in this second quarter. And with the score of Wagner Bulldogs 14, the Cleveland Tigers, I almost called them Coita Tigers, <laughs> Cleveland Tigers 7. And you did hear right, it is 14 to 7. And the Tigers with, I believe that's, I can't remember the quarterback's name. He's in the Freeze. shotgun. Freeze. And he's going to keep himself. And nice piece of running as he gets to the far sidelines. And a good piece of running by the Cleveland quarterback. Looks like he's going to be about two yards short of the first down. So a good eight yards on first uh, down is a not a bad pickup on first down. And, uh, Jeremy, I tell you what, we'll cut you some slack. You haven't been, you know, calling the action here. And so uh, Reeves uh, on, on the keeper there and uh, just handed Jeremy the roster for those of you guys at home. So he'll uh, uh, be given the names like he always does. Does a great job. And we're glad to have his voice back with us now. Well, we hope so, at least. Uh, Reeves from the shotgun after on a second and two play. Reeves going to throw it this time. He has a man. Pass is complete. And he's going to pick up the first down yardage as he gets across the 45 and at the 46-yard line, 228 left in this second quarter. And again, second quarter brought to you by Ruts Barbecue. And I don't know if you guys are probably, you probably can't hear that, but, um, boy, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, guys. The uh, PA announcer here in Cleveland is pretty annoying when it comes to first down. <laughs> Oh, see, I thought he was just creating a ruckus here. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think maybe some people might say that about the uh, Wagner home yeah, field whenever it's there, too. Here's so, a pass deep pass down up. sidelines, and looking for McQuirt was Reeves, and he was well covered by, I believe that was A.J. Freed. So yes. um, I don't know if you are, guys are able to hear that, but any time that the Cleveland Tigers makes a first down, it, it's uh, maybe we might give you a little sound bite of that um, – on the next first down play, we'll hang a microphone out the window and see if you can hear it because you're just going to have to hear it for yourself. Well, I thought maybe we could uh, make Allen kind of give his best uh, try at that uh, to make it sound just like maybe uh, the, the guy. Maybe when the Bulldogs get a first down, we'll, we'll take a shot at it. But until then, let's just uh, focus on the game at hand here. Reeves from the shotgun on a second and ten play. Man in motion. Here's Reeves, this little wide receiver screen. you got to pick up a few blocks. And he is chased down from behind by linebacker number 42, K.J. Lee. But the receiver, number 28, Dakota Hewitt, able to pick up some good yardage. Oh, about five yards. It'll make it a third and a manageable five. And, Jeremy, that's a big-time play by the Tigers that time as, uh, you know, they don't get the first down there, but they're able to get some of that yardage back and make it a manageable, as you said, third down, five yards to go, uh, about a minute and a half until halftime. Uh, maybe they look to make a splash here. Well, I've been noticing that the, the passing plays they do, they're not going vertical. They're not going up the field a whole lot. When they do, they haven't found a whole lot of success. We'll see if they do here. Again, down the field, they're not finding a lot of success, but those uh, short uh, bubble passes or screen passes are, are moving, helping them move the ball. That, that was Reeves looking for McQuirt on a deep out pattern on the far side of the field. A lot of times, Harlan, you, you really have – a tough time making that call uh, on an out pattern on the opposite side of the field because that's very easily could turn into a pick six. Yeah, it definitely could turn into a dangerous situation quickly. Uh, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, it falls down incomplete depending on uh, which side of you're on, you know. But in that situation, when it works out, it, it's great. When it doesn't, the other team's got seven more on the board. Here's a punt now from the Tigers, end over end punt. Fielded by Ford. Ford breaks, breaks a couple of tackles. tackles. Now he's down the sideline and finally knocked out of bounds at about the 45. A nice play by the senior, Hayden Ford. And we, we talked about it last week. Uh, he's, he's had a, a hurt shoulder, I believe, for much of the season. And it looks like he's back in the game form as uh, he, made, he made some good moves there. Had a real good game uh, last week. For sure, Jeremy. That's what I was going to say. You know, we talked about him being a little banged up last week, but – uh, really had a good week and seemed to bounce back, and he's brought that back uh, into this week here with a good return right there. And, Jeremy, a little over a minute to go in the half. Uh, maybe the Bulldogs go after it, uh, or maybe you should give it to Evan and let him run 75 yards again. Well, I, I think, think they would <laughs> settle for about, you know, 60 yards right here. But we're gonna, Here's Evan, speaking of, and they're going to contain him this time across the 45. He still picks up 
about three. It'll be a second and seven, and we're under a minute to play, and it doesn't look like the Bulldogs are in any type of hurry. Yeah, they're probably just going to take their time here. Just keep paying it off. If something happens, it, it happens. If not, let's take it into halftime with a 14-7 to seven lead. Uh, this uh, rate looks like they're going to be able to snap the ball two more times before halftime. Second and seven from the 46 on the Wagner Bulldog side. It'll be Woodson from the shotgun with 30 seconds to play. Evan in the backfield. Woodson going to throw it. Wide receiver screen to Barnett. Barnett comes back to the middle, and it is nicely defended by the Tigers as they're going to pick up maybe maybe two on the play. It'll be third and five, and we looks like we're going to be going. That might be the final play of this second quarter. Well, I heard a whistle there, Jeremy, but the clock keeps running. It looks like it is going to take it down to halftime, but. And, and that's the halftime. I'm I don't know why the whistle kept blowing there. Well, they're keeping them on the field there. Looked like the Bulldogs going to take the timeout. Yeah. Or something is happening. They they're the staying timeout. on the field. I think they called a timeout with about one or two seconds they're left. They're putting three seconds back on the clock. Okay. So either way, this will be the last play of this kind of a kind of a wacky quarter. Um, the Bulldogs have struggled on offense a little bit, uh, yet we've had Evan on two long runs to, to account for the two scores. But the Tigers are hanging hanging tough. Well, I think if you look at the two plays that they scored on, you know, you're looking at if you take those two plays out, we've we've really kind of struggled to move the ball or have any kind of sustainable drive down the field, whereas. The, uh, the points that Cleveland was able to put up, they, they put together two really good drives. We stopped them on fourth and two. Um, looks like we're lining up here and for the last play of the second quarter. And it's going to be an interesting call here uh, as, you know, three seconds left to go uh, in the half. And uh, see, interesting, do we throw a Hail Mary here or do you just give it to Evan and let him run with it? Well, I think we're going to give it to Evan and let him run because he's in the Wildcat right now, and I don't think we're going to have him heave it down the field. But who knows? Here he is over the left side. Now he cuts it back to the right, and there's a hold. And Big there, time yeah. hold right there, Jeremy. Yeah. There are two flags coming in. It was an obvious hold, and that is going to be the end of the first half. Even with that penalty, the – uh, I think if you're a Cleveland Tiger fan, you're pretty happy right now down by seven. I think you count the first half as a success. You've, you've contained really well. You've, you've put points up on the board. Uh, you had two really good drives. One of them ended in a, a fourth down that ended in a turnover there. But um, yeah, I think the, the Cleveland Tigers can be pleased with what they've done so far. The Wagner Bulldogs have a lot to clean up. They have a lot to talk about in this halftime because, uh, you know, they've put the ball on the turf. I think I've counted six times that the ball has skipped in the grass uh, for a fumble in this first half. And uh, you can't win too many games if you're putting the ball in the grass. Definitely not. And uh, as you guys already said, definitely the Cleveland sideline's got to be ecstatic as uh, we went and grabbed some quick dinner here in town in Cleveland. And uh, the people that were uh, serving us were actually saying that Wagner was going to uh, just stomp all over Cleveland. That has certainly not been the case in the first half. 14-7. Uh, at halftime. I want to give one more shout out to our second quarter sponsor, Runt's Barbecue. Thank you so much uh, for your sponsorship of Friday Night Bulldogs. And uh, also want to give a shout out to our sponsor of the halftime show every single week here on Friday Night Bulldogs. That's Century 21 and Miss Charlotte Swinson. Jeremy, she does great things for the community time and time again. And her, her kids have been part of the Wagner school system. Uh, now I believe our grandkids are part of the Wagner public school system. We appreciate Charlotte Swenson and Century 21 sponsoring every halftime show of the Wagner High School marching band. And we appreciate her support of Friday Night Bulldogs. I hope as uh, the music that you hear in the back, I believe it's the Cleveland Tigers cheerleading squad right now who has taken the field. So our band is awaiting there. And uh, as we're talking here, give us give us some comments in the uh, in the chat room. As I think we may have finally tweaked our sound enough. We hope so. Everybody, keep your fingers crossed. But let us know in the chat room, and because we we've struggled for some reason here. Um, and, but we know that our Friday Night Bulldog fans are they're always in it. Uh, no matter how rough it is, whether it's a video, it's audio, maybe even both. They are very faithful in sticking with us to the bitter end. 
and uh, we may be looking into investing into a, a new soundboard, and I'm, I'm going to hope that that's the problem. Yeah, and I think that may be the problem, Jeremy. We've sort of been identifying that over the past couple of weeks. So in light of that, if you'd like to sponsor Friday Night Bulldogs, please contact Miss Joy Anderson. Uh, she is the teacher of the mass communications class. It is 485-5553. Ask for Joy Anderson. And uh, we appreciate all of our sponsors once again. And if you would like to be a part of that, we can make that happen for you. Um, have I got a deal for you? <laughs> well, the... Uh Cleveland Tiger cheerleaders just uh, left the field, and they were wearing pink. Tonight is the uh, Cleveland Tigers Think Pink Night, and uh, a lot of their fans are wearing pink in support of breast cancer awareness. And so uh, I know uh, that is a uh, much-needed uh, awareness and, and something that we need to uh, you know, talk more about. And so we're thankful for them and their uh, bringing light to this issue. Well, and we, we've got a – we're actually in – kind of a luxurious environment as far as Friday Night Bulldogs is concerned because there's a visitor side press box. Now we're in here with the, the Wagner Bulldog coaches, but it's big enough to where we're on one end, they're on the other. We're not really getting in each other's way. Uh, but I say that because we're able to look out onto uh, the Cleveland Tigers fan base and looking at that fan base and the numbers that are not there, they should be there because 14-7, to 7, I, th I think it's, it's probably surprising the Cleveland Tigers as well. You know, if I'm sitting in the stands over there, I'm texting my friends saying, hey, you need to get up here and you need to cheer on the Cleveland Tigers. So we're going to try to find a way to block their cell signal to make sure that doesn't happen. But <laughs> um, until then, we're, we're hoping that the uh, Bulldogs are able to come out into the second half and just, you know, dominate the way we thought they would, the way we know they can. And so uh, – as our high school band and uh, color guard prepares to perform. Um. Well, and unfortunately, the bad thing about being in a visitor side press box, as the uh, pride of Wagner High School marching band is onto the field, the bad part of being on the other side is we're going to be seeing a lot of backs. And uh, as they face the home crowd and, and put on their show for the, the Cleveland Tiger faithful, um, so we may, we may play around with the video a little bit and maybe get some close shots trying to get on individual uh, students instead of maybe the full formations. Definitely in the Bulldogs band getting started now with that show, a great show that we've seen over and over. One more time before we turn it completely over to them, thank you so much to Charlotte Swinson and Century 21 for bringing us this halftime show. And uh, we're just going to be quiet now here for a little bit, let you enjoy the sound of the Widener Bulldog marching band.
Welcome back, Friday Night Bulldog fans, as the Cleveland Tiger band is still on the field, as you may be able to see some of that, as we are going to start recapping the first half here and try to get the sound uh, back adjusted, and hopefully you've enjoyed your halftime, as again, there's, <laughs> Harlan, the scoreboard shows 40 seconds, but uh, there's no way that the Cleveland Tiger marching band is going to be off the field in now 33 seconds. Yeah, I think they get uh, 33 more seconds just for the halftime show, and then I, I believe they get either five minutes or three minutes to kind of come back out and do some warm up for the football players and uh, kind of get their legs back under them before the second half uh, sort of gets underway. But the story here, Jeremy, in the first half, 14-7, Bulldogs up, Evan able to break a couple of uh, long touchdown runs as we're so used to seeing this season. Um, but what we're not used to seeing is, uh, a, you know, maybe a closer game. Well, it certainly is shocking to Bulldog fans, and I think it's shocking to Tiger fans, too. <laughs> As, again, we, we talked about, uh, I believe we ate at the local subway tonight, and um, we know we know there, and, and we're not, hopefully we're not selling them out to their own fans if some, maybe have some Cleveland Tigers fans listening to the Friday Night Bulldogs, but um, they were... They were more than convinced that the Bulldogs were going to run away with this one. And, and so far, as the Bulldogs, you might see them at the bottom of your screen, the, the team coming, walking onto the field. And again, the Tiger band is still out there. The Tigers uh, football team is at the end zone, and so they're out somewhat on the field too. So um, Maybe someone thought, well, that's awful rude of the of the Bulldogs. Well, the, the Tigers are out on the field, too. So, um, and you see now that the the band, there's no formation. There's no formation going off the field. They're just running off the field. <laughs> hopefully everything is going well for you at home. You still got a great picture. And hopefully the sound is taken care of for this second half. And Harlan, the halftime, as always, throughout the season and throughout the rest of the season, sponsored by Century 21, Charlotte Swinson. Charlotte Swinson has done a great job, uh, once again, sponsoring all of our halftimes here uh, for Friday Night Bulldogs. We're so thankful for that, so thankful for her support. And uh, uh, we'll do it again next week uh, with Charlotte Swinson bringing us the halftime show. And uh, uh, bring Alan Muhlenweg back into the fold here as uh, I think he went down to grab some popcorn or something. He's kind of sold us out a little bit at halftime, you know, Jeremy. Well, I ran into a, a couple of Wagner celebrities in Roger Hayes and Robert Schaefer. And anytime you run into one of those two guys, uh, you can guarantee that there's going to be a long conversation ensuing. Well, maybe that's where you were at then. We'll take that as an excuse this time. You know, don't let it happen again. Uh, but that's how it goes. But uh, once again, story so far, 14-7, Bulldogs in front in this one. But really a little bit of a slow start on the offensive side. Uh, Jeremy, Allen, uh, whichever one of you guys want to chime in there, what have you seen so far in the first half? I, I, I kind of sound harsh on the Bulldogs, but it's kind of one of those deals where you know what they're capable of doing, and then you see what they're doing, and they don't match up. And that's where the Bulldogs are at right now is – you know they're capable of doing so much more, but just little some, some fundamental mistakes, the exchange between quarterback and center, uh, the exchange between the quarterback and the, the uh, running back, just some little things like that that uh, maybe we've gotten to where we're overlooking uh, coming into this game and uh, need to focus and settle in there. Defensively, I think they've played a really good game. Uh, the seven points came on that special teams block punt, so they ha the defense has not given up any points. So. Defensively, they've played really well. They, the Cleveland Tigers had a really long drive deep into uh, Bulldog territory. I'm a little surprised they didn't go for the field goal, but you know, it, you know, those are the chances, the risks that you end up taking, and then it uh, didn't pay off for them, and the Bulldogs were able to take the ball over from their own uh, six at that point. Alan, you mentioned that field goal attempt that they did not have. Uh, we saw the field goal kicker on the extra point after that blocked punt for a touchdown. And he put it well through the uprights. I believe, Harlan, it actually went over the field house at the end of the stadium. Yeah, definitely. When it cleared the field house, and I was kind of thinking, oh, he's got a leg on him. Uh, but haven't showcased him uh, in the kicking game, at least 
during uh, – well, I say during the game. The extra point is during the game, but the play clock's not running, so that doesn't really count uh, there on that particular instance. So, uh, anyways, uh, again, just kind of slow for uh, really maybe both sides a little bit, but for Cleveland, they're on the – Maybe the better end of this side so far in this game. What do the Bulldogs look to do in the second half to establish themselves? Uh, I think they're going to have to just control the football. Don't drop it. You know, they, they've dropped the football six or seven times. Uh, and that's not on a drop pass. That's on a, a run or an exchange between center and the snap. So not dropping the football uh, and just uh, keeping, it, keeping it on the ground. I think running the football a little bit more, establishing that ground game a little bit more. I don't think this team has just been able to have a whole lot of success in the passing game, but we'll see what happens here in the second half. Definitely going to see what happens, and it's rolling for the Bulldogs, getting the ball from the referee right now and getting it set up on the tee, and we are preparing to get underway in this second half as uh, the Bulldogs will go in once again, up 14-7, looking to start off strong here uh, in the second half, and uh, I'm going to turn it back over to the play-by-play -play man, at Jeremy Holmes. That's number three, Chase McGuirt. He's been a workhorse as far as special teams is concerned. Made a couple of tackles on special teams. He's the one that blocked that punt for a touchdown, uh, able to block it and recover it for the score, and that's how the, the Tigers got on board. This will be McGuirt on the kickoff return this to start the second half. Here's McGuirt. He's got some space. Oh, good, good hit in the open field, but didn't wrap him up. McGuirt still squirming. <laughs> wow. McQuirt showing some good hard running across the 40, uh, around across the 45 to about the 46 yard line. Um, Allen, the first hit was probably at about the 37 or the 38. Yeah, and the problem is though, I think, and you see this sometimes with uh, uh, ambitious tacklers, is instead of wrapping their arms around, they focus on the big hit and not the tackle. And so uh, he was able to gain about eight more, almost 10 more yards after the initial contact. So hopefully we can wrap up a little bit better in the second half. And uh, here come the Tigers, Jeremy in shotgun formation. Looks like it's going to be Reeves with one back in the backfield with him. He's got four wide receivers, two on each side. He gives the handoff up the middle to Hewitt. He takes it to the left-hand side. Not a whole lot of room gains, maybe two on the play. Going to bring up second down. I believe that was number three, A.J. Freeth, coming up from the corner position, making that tackle. And it looks like... Number 28, Hewitt, will gain about three on the play. The ball is resting at midfield. It'll be second and seven now for the Tigers. Ball at the 50. Hopefully everything is going on all right at home. We appreciate everyone that's logged on to Friday Night Bulldogs. Uh, we see Quita James in our chat room. Heather Tillotson also there. We appreciate everyone that supports Friday Night Bulldogs every week as Reeves from the shotgun on a second and seven play. Reeves going to throw it and got a man. Pass is complete. He makes the catch, tries to get to the outside, and a great tackle by number 17, Chase Barnett. That was a good job by... Gain of one on that play. Again, the short passing seems to be the way they're getting the, the completions, but not for a whole lot of gain on that one. And that was Tyler Miles on the reception that time for the Tigers, not quite able to shake the defenders. Uh, as Allen said, it's going to bring up third down. And it uh, looks like about five to go on this one. Ball at the 48-yard line of the Bulldogs on a third and five. We're just inside ten and a half left of this third quarter. So just started the third quarter. And we appreciate everyone that's logged on as Reeves is from the shotgun on a third and now five for some reason. And here's Reeves flushed out of the pocket, rolls to his left, got a man open. And great defensive play by number 25, Devin Hawkins. You know, Devin, Devin is able to turn just at the right moment to kind of backpedal into that. Otherwise, I think that would have thrown it over his head and he would have never seen it. So uh, good instincts to turn on that ball. Kind of an interesting uh, play there as Miles was the intended receiver, not able to come up with it as Hawkins able to get on it. But uh, Reeves goes to his left and then tries to throw back across his body and just kind of flick of the wrist there. And uh, almost big time play from the defense for the Bulldogs that time. I believe that's number two. Tyler Miles going to punt it away back to Hayden Ford. And at the line drive punt, and it'll get inside the 20 to about the 18 yard line. And that's where the Bulldogs will have it. First and 10, they'll spot it at the 19. 10 minutes, five seconds left in this third quarter. Wagner Bulldogs 14, the Cleveland Tigers 7. 
And uh, don't mind telling you guys at home, we got a few old soccer players here and uh, Golden Toe Jeremy Holmes uh, in the box and uh, professional soccer coach Alan Muhlenweg of the Wagner Warriors uh, up here. That was a pretty good kick there as he kind of just took one step and put his foot into it, got a little bit of momentum behind the ball. Well, and if you're a Tiger fan, uh, more importantly even than that was the non-return uh, because of the kick. So here's Woodson from the shotgun. Here's a handoff to Evett. Evett over the right side trying to break that corner. He is around the corner. And right now, Alan, we talked about them containing uh, Evett for the most part. But in that containment, they're giving up seven, eight yards every time. Well, and I think if you look at that play right there, they're able to stretch it out a little bit more. Um, and, and the Wagner Bulldogs have mixed it up quite a bit, inside runs, outside runs. And... Um, just need to continue mixing it up a little bit. It looks like uh, they're calling it second and one now. So he's going to get nine on that play. Maybe, you know, well, it's going to be close enough for a measurement. So uh, right now the, the Tigers, even though they've, they've given up two big runs, but other than that, they've been sort of able to contain Evett. But um, you can't really call it contain having a nine-yard gain on first down. I think when you're talking about Evett, you can call it contained. And when you think about the fact that, you know, I think Evett is coming up on 150 yards in this game already and two touchdowns. And it's a Wagner Bulldog first down. And that was a, a weak attempt for yeah, Allen yeah. to sound like the, uh, I was going to say visiting uh, PA announcer, but he's not visiting. We're visiting the home side. Uh, PA announcer, uh, I didn't but want to Alan. Watch your ears uh, at home because uh, <laughs> it would have required a lot more uh, volume. Bulldogs have it back to the line of scrimmage here. It's in shotgun formation. Uh, Woodson has it, throws it to his left hand side, and it is going to fall incomplete. That's number 17, Chase Barnett, the intended receiver, and he had a few blockers in front, just not able to to reel it in. So it will be a second and ten for the Bulldogs. The ball is at the 29-yard line, 9.47 left in this third quarter. And appreciate the OJ Dog fan. Says the sound is much better now, so hopefully everybody else can attest to that. Uh, took us a half, but uh, we got it going hopefully for the rest of this half, the most important half. Here's Woodson up under center on a second and ten play. I formation. Here's a pitch out to Evett. Evett coming near side. Evett across the 35. Tackles. And again, it looks like he's going to get 10 yards on that play as well, maybe 11. And, Enough. yep, they're going to give him that first down as he gets to the 40-yard line. Evett for 10-yard gain, enough for a Bulldog first and 10. And yeah, we talked about the the announcer from the other side. I've, I've heard him announce the, uh, the Tiger first and 10, not quite with the same enthusiasm when he does the Bulldog first and 10. Yeah, he may be a bit of a homer. <laughs> Wagner Definitely. Bulldog, first and ten. <laughs> so, Woodson will be up under center on a first and ten from the 40-yard line. Eye formation. Here's Rodriguez on that Inside. trap. Rodriguez across the 45, now across the 50. He's still on his feet. Across, wow. <laughs> across the 45. He got, I, I believe that was ten yards that he carried some Tigers on his back. I think he carried... 10 yards, and then the team effort there on the end got him about eight more. That was a good time, big time run there by Rodriguez, but a great play call as it looked like they were really looking for that ball to go to Evett in the backfield and gave it to the fullback quickly, had some space up the middle. I think it caught us all by surprise on that, that inside handoff. It's a, it's a, a fullback trap is what they uh, believe is the call, and uh, we see that every once in a while uh, from, the, from the Bulldog offense. And here's Woodson up under center. Again, I formation. Here's Evett. No, that's a fake. Woodson wanting to throw the ball, flushed to his right. Now that's looks right. downfield, and the ball is incomplete. Now, I believe it was intended for number 20 and also number 44. I think 33 was over there too, guys. There was several uh, maybe possible intended receivers there. He was really just being pushed out of the pocket there and uh, uh, you know, coming off the fake and just – trying to get rid of it, but the uh, Tigers almost got their hands on it there. Uh, a little bit of a scary moment for Bulldogs fans, but uh, incomplete pass, second down and 10, and do it again, basically. Ball you know, is at the 43-yard line. Go ahead, Alan. Again, neither team is really having a ton of success in the passing game, and so we're just having to move the ball on the ground. 
which uh, if they want to have that game, I think, uh, I think we have the advantage on the ground game. Well, speaking of the passing game, I think we're going to see one here. That's exactly right. Here's a screen pass to Evan. Evan breaks a couple, a couple tackles. tackles. Still on his wow. feet. And now he is finally dragged down at the 25-yard line. And Harlan, you had to, if you're a, a Tiger fan, you had to be knowing that that pass was some type of screenplay to Evett as we had four receivers to the near side. For sure, you had that diamond set formation uh, of the receivers all the way to the left. And it looked like some of the Tigers knew it was going there as well as it looked like one, uh, maybe the linebacker was almost able to jump that there. But ball gets out to Evett quickly. And uh, he's able Similar to gain formation. quality yardage. Same formation again, that diamond set on the left-hand side. Now we're going the other it's side, Woodson. Oh, wow, that was a great, great throw by Woodson. That was a great catch by the senior, Hayden Ford. It was right on the money. Uh, yeah, it was right on the money. And man, the timing of that. I mean, the, the, you couldn't have had any better coverage than what the Tiger had. Well, they had that man coverage up there, and the way you beat that is just using the slant routes. Yeah, and they did a good job there. Good uh, Again, good, good pass, good catch. Bulldogs moving in the positive yardage here. Going to bring up second down. Looks like uh, one to go here uh, with just under eight minutes in the third quarter to go. In the I formation. Woodson up under center. Trouble with the snap, but he's able to hand it off to Hawkins. Hawkins to go uh, just outside the 10-yard line, looks like, Allen, but uh, – Anytime Hawkins touched the ball, he's going to get hit five or six times before he actually comes goes down. You know, he's tough and he's low to the ground, and so that allows him to keep that center of gravity. You know, and it, it's tough to tackle those guys. According to the scoreboard, ball is at the 22-yard line, but that's way off. They <laughs> forgot to change. Now it's down to the 12-yard line. There we go. First and 10, ball at the 12-yard line. Woodson up under center. Here's that fullback trap again to Rodriguez, and he's going to get about three, but that's about it. That was a tough three. He fought for those. He had two or three in front of him the whole time. Yeah, that time the uh, Tigers' defensive line ready for the fullback trap. Didn't catch him as off guard as it did before, uh, but the Bulldogs doing a good job mixing it up here uh, on this series, kind of going to the pass, spreading them out a little bit, and then coming back to that run game up the middle. Using multiple plays out of the same formation, they've they've used two or three different formations on this drive, and had six or seven different plays out of those formations. So, you know, really being able to, to keep the the defense confused. Here's Rodriguez. Rodriguez almost the into the end zone. It looks like they're going to stop him on the one. And that looks like that linesman was just right of where the G is down there to signify the goal line. So it's about at the one-yard line. But they did give him the first down, so now it's first and goal from the one. First and goal from the one, 629 left in this third quarter. I believe this is the first drive of the uh, second half for the Bulldogs, and they're threatening the score. Well, this is their first sustainable drive of the game. They've been able to move the ball. Uh, they haven't had to depend on one big, and there's a fumble. And I think the Tigers got it. Yep. And no signal yet, and there are and there, there is the is. signal. Wow, just as we were talking about establishing a run or establishing a drive, first and goal from the one, and, and Harlan, we put the ball down. I would say on the carpet, we put the ball down on the yellow-colored field. Put it down, and that's what we said at halftime. It uh, can't happen. we got to take care of the ball and, uh, you know, watch those turnovers here. Uh, puts the defense in a – uh, in, in a big-time situation because they're going to have to uh, hold them back here. Defense has played strong really all uh, all game long. I, I really think we're going to get a safety here. I'm just going to go ahead and call it. Maybe not on this down, but the next down. As he wheels it over, and the, uh, that's a complete pass. And yeah, just as I said it, I think, we might have I think I might have jinxed us as that was a good, uh, a good pickup on first down. Out to the uh, – looks like – wow. That. Okay, the ball is looks like it's resting at the 11-yard line. It'll be first and 10 now for the Tigers, the ball at the 11-yard line. And we just heard the uh, Cleveland PA announcer let us know that it was first down very emphatically. You know, and I think we were fortunate in the first half that with as many drops as we had that we recovered all those fumbles. It was just a matter of time before we gave one up. 
Reeves from the shotgun. Here's that Similar. same play, the same receiver, and he puts his shoulder down, and it looks like he's going to get another first down. I'm going to hang the – we're going to actually hang a couple of mics out the window because we want you to hear this. They're getting ready to set the ball. Looks like we're just – Looks like there's some, uh, oh, and it looks like there's a fumble on the play, and Wagner recovered. We couldn't see it. The uh, the Wagner football team on the sideline uh, it happened on the near side, and we weren't able to observe it, but apparently there's a fumble on the play, and uh, Wagner recovered. So, you know, we lost about 25 net yards on that. We're, we're taking over on the, the Cleveland 25. Well, the Cleveland Tiger coaching staff wants to know what in the heck just happened as uh, it looked like Miles was carrying a couple of Bulldog players for a first down, and then all of a sudden, we're pointing the other way, Bulldog ball. This may be one of those situations where we're lucky that uh, high school football doesn't have instant replay. <laughs> Here's that inside handoff to Lee, K.J. Lee over the right side. It's the first time we've called his name on the offensive side, Harlan, and he's going to pick up just one, maybe two. Well, we're going to give him one yard, and that's it. Yeah, and it's good to see K.J. Lee get his hands on the ball on the offensive side. Uh, anything the Bulldogs can do to uh, sort of take the defensive eyes off of Evett uh, for a little bit to give it to several different people. And we have so many weapons, as we talked about over and over each week. Uh, just give it to somebody different every time, and then all of a sudden that creates a hole for somebody to make a huge play. Woodson from the shotgun. If you look to – and here's a crossbuck play to Hawkins. Hawkins spins and moves and now lunges forward – to about the 20 yard line. Hard piece of running by Hawkins. Looks like they might get him to the 19. Yet again, another big time play by Hawkins. We already talked about you cannot bring him down just by hitting him one time. He's going to just keep going. He's going to twist and uh, do everything he can to push that ball even more forward. You know, they talk about him in the, the, the gym, how much work he puts on his legs, that he squats as much as some of the linemen and uh, puts a lot of effort on being able to keep those legs moving. I tell you what, I like Woodson wheeling it out here to Ford, but we're not going to see that this time. Here's Hawkins. Hawkins over the left side looking for a first down yardage. He needed three. I think he only got about two as they spot it just outside the 17, I believe. It's going to be fourth and short, and you got a decision time with four minutes left in the third quarter. You know, Jeremy, I'm just uh – I, I don't know, but we have Roland, who's been really good on kicking the extra points. Uh, haven't seen a whole lot of him, if, if any, in the field goal game. I'm not – can't recall. Uh, I think he gave we'll the ball to Evett. And they, they, they only gave him one there, Allen, because it's fourth and two, and the Bulldogs are going to go for it. Here's Evett from the Wildcat. Overload on the left side. you got to believe they're going to that left side and say stop me if you can. Here's Evett. And they stopped him. They did stop him. That's a good play. That was a great tackle. By number 68, number 68, Ian Stahl, I believe, making a good play. And, uh, you know, I don't think it, if he hadn't gotten that tackle, I think he was gone. Yeah, there was a big hole, and he just happened to have a shoestring tackle, literally, as uh, Stahl makes a good play. Had a little bit of, little bit of extra uh, symbol there as he stands up and <laughs> gives a little Superman, uh, opening up the, the Superman vest. So uh, we don't want to. Uh, let the let the young lad be overconfident because um, you're still down seven. You're still down seven. That's right. Here's Reeves from the shotgun, hands off to number 28, and he's going to make a couple of yards. Hewitt on that, and uh, especially if you're down by seven, and for all for all intents and purposes, Harlan, the offense really hadn't done much. No, they were. You know, they had that long sustained drive, as Allen was talking about, and then all of a sudden there's the fumble at the one, able to get it back uh, on the f with the fumble from the other side, from the Tigers, uh, but not able to really produce anything there. Now Bulldog defense back out there, uh, hard at work again. Second down and about eight to go. Hewitt picked up two on that play as Reeves and Hewitt are in the backfield. I believe that's uh, McHewitt on the – and, and interception, interception. and oh, <laughs> looked like the grass monster got him on that one. I'm not sure that he got tackled as much as he just got 
a little overexcited about what just happened. Harlan Hawkins has had a couple of different opportunities to make. He's had a lot of tip balls. That time is right between the numbers. He wasn't going to miss that one. Definitely. And Hawkins, if he's going to have the opportunity like that, he's going to take advantage of it. We've been calling his name uh, really all season long on the offensive side and the defensive side. He comes up with the interception there and puts the offense back on the field. And, uh, Jeremy, we just talked about it. It's big time for the offense to move the ball right here on a short field. Well, I think Hawkins saw the goal line and just uh, <laughs> maybe just got too wide-eyed and forgot to look at his feet, too, uh, as he was tripped up at about the 12-yard line, first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Here is Rodriguez from the Wildcats, straight up the middle. Rodriguez, a spin move, and he is... Waiting for the signal, and he's in. Touchdown. Touchdown. It took a little while for the linesman to come in as Rodriguez gave one extra lunge right there at the end to put him over the plane for the touchdown. And that's big time for the Bulldog offense, able to push it in for the score. Uh, that's going to take it. Uh, going to take it 27 pending the PAT as Roland comes out uh, preparing for that. But again, uh, Bulldogs have got to, on the offensive side, uh, show who they are. Gibson and Barnett to exchange a snap on this extra point. Roland with the extra point attempt. Snap, the hold, kick is up, Looks and good. Roland splits and the uprights good. once again. Roland, I believe, remains perfect this whole season. And uh, that might not be a, 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 you might not think that's a very big feat, but when you're talking of how many points the Bulldogs have put up every week, uh, I mean, Roland's got to be, you know, 25 of 25 right now. Well, you know, you're talking about the, the amount of scoring that Wagner has done. It's interesting that we're still kind of sitting here 21-7 going, you know, the Wagner offense really has got to establish themselves. It's 21-7, and we still haven't seen their best game yet today. I, I mean, really, Alan, we would classify it as nowhere near yeah. uh, the best game. That 21-7 has been two long runs, two kind of big plays, and then all of a sudden this – uh, run on a short field here, but we really haven't seen the Bulldogs keep an established uh, offensive possession, able to put it in on a drive that way. Um, but uh, going back to Roland, perfect on the season. That's it, it. Really can't be overstated, Jeremy. The importance of that. Anytime you're talking about special teams, that one point, you never know when it can come back on you if you miss it. Well, you know, it all. It's almost like uh, they probably should take us off, take us off the air because we're talking about Alan. You said. Uh, the Bulldog offense struggling. It's 21-7, to okay? And, uh, and probably would only would be 21-0 had it not been for the block punt. So uh, a little bit of shame on ourselves for talking about the, the Bulldog offense, but it isn't the accustomed way of what we've been seeing from the Wagner offense uh, for the previous seven games. Nice kick. Good kick. McWirth with a great over-the-shoulder catch. Now he's got to try to make the best of it. McWirth. A lot of Weaving tacklers in and over out. committing to the tackle, and he's just moving around them. That was a great return. 27-yard <laughs> line. That was a, he fielded that at about the five, and uh, with all kinds of Bulldogs around him, he was still able to return it 22 yards. And Jeremy said, see what he can make out of it. Well, he, he made something out of it, that's for sure. Uh, so he's weaving his way through the Bulldogs uh, there that time on the kick coverage. Uh, you know, 21-7, we talked about, you know, it's 21-7, the Bulldogs are up. But, hey, on the other side of that for the Tigers, it's only 21-7. <laughs> We're only down 14 that's, in that's the third two quarter. That's two possessions, two possessions. So. Now, there on the offensive side for the Tigers, we haven't seen a whole lot of firepower, but we've seen sort of glimpses that something could happen. Here's Reeves from the shotgun, and they're looking for something to happen, being down by two scores. Uh, that's number 28. Here's a glimpse of what you just talked about. Number 28 for the Tigers, Dakota Hewitt. And Hewitt, Allen, gets good yardage on first down. Well, Hewitt and Reeves have combined for the majority of their yards, and they've done it on the ground. And so, um, you know, when we look at the, the quarterback situation for the Cleveland Tigers, they have uh, they haven't ran their quarterback as much as they did in the first half. And they had a lot of success with that, so I'm a little surprised they haven't done more of that. Um, maybe we'll see some of that here as we get later into the second half. Derek Reeves, the quarterback from the shotgun on a – First and ten play, or second and two, I'm sorry. And here's a wheel out to uh, McWirth, I believe. Makes a couple of tackler miss. 
almost loses the ball, but he's going to get a first down. And I think we're going to get that first down call for you this time. Here it comes. Wait for it. Oh, now he's going to prove he's a liar this time and not do it. The Cleveland Tigers are in the huddle. It is first and ten. Apparently our uh, PA announcer has forgot to uh, his, uh, his trademark. I think he's heard us talking about it over <laughs> here. Maybe they're following our broadcast. Reeves from the shotgun. Hand the off. inside handoff again. Good yardage straight up the middle. I think we're going to get that first down call this time. It's first and ten from about the 40. And <laughs> there it was. <laughs> With one minute left in the third quarter, it is first and ten for the Cleveland Tigers from their own 49. They come up to the uh, line of scrimmage in the shotgun formation. Ball is at midfield with Reeves in the shotgun and a little bit of confusion in the backfield and the Bulldog defense makes them pay for it as number 28 takes the handoff, Hewitt, but it looked like Reeves uh, might have forgotten what side Hewitt was on. Yeah, it looked like he was going one way and uh, Reeves were, or Hewitt was going the other and so uh, Bulldogs were able to make him pay for that. looks like they stop him a little bit short of the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 10 from there. 20 seconds left in this third quarter. We hope the Bulldog fans at home were able to hear that first down call as we've been talking about it uh, throughout the game. And uh, he, he definitely, stadium announcer here at uh, Billy Vessels Memorial Stadium, Stadium gets real excited about those first downs. Here's Reeves from the shotgun. Here's Hewitt. Hewitt and the Bulldog defense again. Making a stop in the backfield, Harlan. I couldn't see who that was, but somebody on the uh, right side of the Bulldog defensive line was able to break through and at least get an arm on him in the backfield before he was able to hit that line of scrimmage. Yeah, and that's going to bring up the end of the third quarter there, Allen, and uh, it's going to be 21-7, Bulldogs on top in this one. And as we go into the fourth quarter, you know, the old trademark holding up the fours, as we say, every single week it's going to be third down for the Tigers when we get back and uh, – Honestly, there, I thought we were going to see the, the play blown dead because the receiver on our side, closest to us, uh, for the Tigers, looked like he wasn't quite set yet when that ball was snapped. Well, we're catching up our, in our chat room, and uh, Beth Brown was uh, doing a little cheering herself in the chat room, talking about pumping that Bulldog spirit up. I'm not going to actually do the cheer, but uh, I think we probably all are familiar with that. And uh, looks like you might have heard that first down call, and Maybe they're wanting that at W.L. Odom Field first down call, like, just like we've got it here at Billy Vessels Memorial Stadium. I'm not sure that anybody can really reproduce um, the sound, we'll call it, that we hear when there's a first down for uh, the Tigers, although it would be fun to try, as we tried to allow Allen to do. And as you can see, <laughs> when you heard it, uh, it's, it's not hard, easy to do. It's hard to do that justice. <laughs> It's third and ten when play resumes as we start this fourth quarter. I guarantee you, you'll hear that first down call, especially on this, if they get it, because this is a big third down here, Harlan. Big time third down. It's the beginning of the fourth quarter. They're down by uh, two touchdowns here. they got to make something happen on the offensive side, uh, do the Tigers, um, or, or maybe we may be calling it over already if they don't convert this here. Well, I think you're going to see them. If they don't make it here, you're going to see them go for fourth. Reeves from the shotgun. Reeves looking on an out pattern. McWirth makes the catch, and he's near first down yardage. Think he's going to come up a little close. McWirth makes the catch, and boy, that's going to be that's going to be real close. I think they're going to be about a football length shy, and you can see the the referee head referee holding up the closed fist. That's a signal for a fourth down. Yeah, you might have heard the, uh, some of the coaches in the box behind me. It looked like one of the Wagner Bulldogs got uh, hit late after the play was dead, but uh, no call from the refs. And it's about fourth and one. And uh, like I said, they're going to go for it on fourth down. And uh, the Wagner faithful are getting loud in their seats right now. It's going to be Reeves from the shotgun. 
Hewitt in the backfield. They're going to run it. No, they're nope. going to pass it. Now he's, and got a man he's wide open. open in the middle of the field. That's number two. He's still on his feet. Not sure how he was able to get out of that tackle as Miles. We've seen him on a couple of other receptions, Harlan. Uh, able to get those yak yardage. Get the yak yards. Big time play, uh, really, by Reeves and Miles there. Looked like Reeves was going to take off for a second. Then he just kind of flips it over to Miles. Miles brings it in as we get the first down call one more time because it was a huge play That's a uh, game for the saving. Tigers. That's a game-saving play right there for the, the Cleveland Tigers. They don't get that, and Wagner's able to get the ball. I don't know that they have enough time to get their two-point uh, two uh, possession scores they'll need to get to, to tie it up. That's a good call, Alan, because we're uh, one minute into this fourth quarter as Reese from the shotgun hands off to McGurth. Uh, nifty moving as he's still on his feet inside and the he's close to the line. two it looks like that was you know, we've been bragging on the Wagner Bulldog defense but right now they're getting carved up pretty easily that wasn't McGirth Harlan that was Hewitt the tailback that's getting uh, gotten most of the calls tonight as far as the running back and I don't know I'm what's sorry, going on got, over there got take you to the, <laughs> I was gonna say something right there and all of a sudden in my ear I hear the the PA announcer again but Look out for Hewitt. Somebody's taking some dancing lessons that time around. He was putting so many moves on. But now the Tigers have it back at the line of scrimmage in the pistol formation. Reeves from the shotgun. Here's Hewitt. The ball is on the ground. Let's see what right, happens. Looks like the Bulldogs jumped on it there, Jeremy. We'll see what comes up. Waiting I for think the signal. Hewitt might have gotten it back. Still waiting for that call. And there's – the second in, yeah. down indicator is up, and so it remains Cleveland Tiger ball, but it looks like they lost about uh, four or five yards on that. Yeah, I think it was Hewitt that jumped uh, on his own fumble. I can't, I don't recall who the Bulldog was. I think he stripped it out of there. Is uh, Hewitt was um, pretty surprised that the ball was no longer in his hands, scrambling to get back to that ball. For sure, big time play by the Bulldog defense there. Flexed their muscle a little bit. And uh, the Tigers had some momentum going. Maybe the Bulldogs just snatched it out of their hands. Here's Reeves from the shotgun. He's going to throw it this time. Rolls to his left. Now looks back to his right. He's got a man. That's Hewitt. Hewitt makes the catch, but a nice defensive pursuit. That was Rodriguez and company making the stop. Nice play by the defense, Alan. Well, Rodriguez did a good job of getting his legs and holding on to him, even though uh, wasn't able to bring him down immediately there, was able to slow him down long enough to get some help on the tackle. Yeah, great job by the, the Bulldog defense once again there to hold that line, uh, and really a good job by the coverage uh, that time. There was just no room or nowhere for Reeves to, uh, you know, get the ball into there. Gets it down to Hewitt as sort of a check down, but nowhere for him to run once he brings it in. And now the Tigers back to the line of scrimmage. On a third and five play, scoreboard says from the five, Here's Reeves, looks over in the end zone, and the ball falls incomplete. You know, he had him wide open, but as he was not able to get his feet set, that ball just kind of slipped and sailed away from him. Yeah, and he had Bundy there uh, in the end zone, just not able to get it to him, not able to convert, and that's going to be a huge play because now it's fourth down for the Tigers, and I don't want to say this is going to be their last chance, but this is their best chance to get back in the game. Well, I think if they give it up here on downs, uh, and, and don't convert any points out of this situation, uh, they're going to be hard-pressed to uh, be able to make up two possessions with, what, 8.42 left in the game. I just don't think they're going to be able to do it. So, yeah, they got to take their chances here. They line up. That's Reeves. Reeves rolls, rolls out. Right. Got a man in the end zone. Oh, oh the ball's rolls out. And it's recovered in the end zone. For a, I don't know that he's they, I don't he know caught the it. They're, he they're, never caught it. Complete pass. They think that it's they're going talking to be a it touchdown. over here, <laughs> and it is a touchdown. touchdown. Oh my goodness! Wow, and Jeremy, I don't know about that. It didn't look like he had possession of the catch. So how can you call the fumble and recovery in the end zone? A little bit of controversy there, but uh, that's why we're in the press box and not calling it down on the play. Referee said touchdown, and. Uh, Tigers hope, are back in it. I hope you guys got a good shot of that at home. It was on the far side of the field, but the pass, I believe that was Tyler Miles who, who caught the pass. Not sure who put the hit on it. But they hammered him. They did hammer him. Here's Miles with that extra point, and it is up and good. And it went for a mile past that, too. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It Kicked really it over did. the field house again. Well, and the hit was put on, and almost immediately – I, you know, I, I think it was a good call. I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Is uh, Miles 
made a football move, if you're familiar with that term. They, they, that, is, that is the phrase that they use. He caught the ball and turns. He turned towards the end zone and made a football move. Ball comes out. Unfortunately, it went the Tiger way. Yeah, Jeremy, I mean, it, you could say that that way. I mean, I, you make a good <laughs> point, you know, a football move because he does kind of catch it, tries to turn and get it to the pylon. Ball comes out. Long story short is the referees called it a touchdown. Doesn't really matter. Uh, at this point for us, it's just conjecture. Well, yeah. 21-14, 8.30 left in the fourth quarter. And the uh, Tigers line up for their kickoff and the uh, Bulldogs line up to receive um, we may be in for a, a fight for this last eight and a half minutes. We're going to have to hopefully see uh, if the uh, Bulldogs can put together a long drive here without coughing up the football and uh, converting some first downs, eating some clock up, and hopefully putting some points on the board. If you remember, guys, that was a 73-yard touchdown drive. Uh, why I remember that, we talked about McGuirt on the good return that he got to the 27-yard line. And here is the ensuing kickoff by Miles. Little pooch, pooch kick and tackled immediately by the Tiger. Uh, that, I believe that's number 28, Hewitt, on the tackle. Now all of a sudden, the Tigers have a little bit of life breathed into their nostrils. And as far as that return was concerned, Bulldogs not really showing a whole lot of life. Not a whole lot there, not a whole lot of room as the Tigers bring him down very quickly. And this is a huge play uh, for the offense, for the Bulldogs, to get something established, pull that momentum back uh, to their side uh, as they still hold on to the 21-14 lead here, 8.26 left to go uh, in the game. Well, this is about character now. You know, this is where they're going to have to prove that they want this season and uh, run up the middle and nothing happening there. It's going to be exciting fourth quarter, no doubt, as we're at – almost at the eight minute mark. This fourth quarter brought to you by Cowboy and Coney Island, uh, right there in Wagner. I believe that uh, is Tina Deckard, is, uh, who's actually a former Wagner Middle School teacher. And we appreciate the Deckards and Cowboy Coney Island and their support of Friday Night Bulldogs. So I've eaten there a couple times. They got good stuff out there. Go visit them. We appreciate their support of Friday Night Bulldogs and this fourth quarter, an exciting fourth quarter at that as Woodson from the shotgun on a second and ten. Woodson going to throw. Got a man downfield looking Under for free. Throwing, it's and it's intercepted. Intercepted by number five for the Tigers. Number five. That's Hunter Bundy, Jeremy, got on the interception. 7.38 left in the fourth quarter. The Cleveland Tigers have the ball in Wagner territory on the 35. And we're in for a fight, folks. And if you thought that the announcer is getting – Real excited about a first down. Man, I think he's blowing the speakers over there right now. Well, you should see the sidelines right now. You can see the difference in care and the attitude and the morale on the sidelines. The uh, Cleveland Tigers are pumped. They're, they've come out to play. And the, uh, the, the Wagner Bulldogs, just some of them look like they're struggling with being here tonight. Well, and, and you know, with, with the way that they were uh, predicted to – just really uh, have this game in hand before they even uh, stepped out on the field. Sometimes it's hard to, to keep that to keep that championship mentality. Here's a first and ten. The ball is at the 35 yard line. Reeves from the shotgun uh, rolls roll out to his left. He's got a man open in the flat, and he is tackled by number. I believe that was number 42, KJ Lee. But the receiver Harlan. That was Casey Buller on the receiving end. Uh, of that, uh, of the throw. Looks uh, like about a nine-yard gain. It's going to bring up second down and, uh, yeah, about one yard there, Allen, after the nine-yard gain uh, on the nice pitch and catch there from the Tigers. And uh, they've really got the momentum here and putting something together. Seven minutes left in this fourth quarter. The ball is at the 27-yard line on a second and one play. Reeves from the shotgun. He's got Hewitt in the backfield. He'll hand off to Hewitt. Hewitt straight up the middle looking for first down yardage. He Depending on his much. progress, he didn't need much to get the first down. but He got the first down, uh, Allen, as he got across the – well, the ball is going to be placed just inside the 25-yard line. There's the signal for a first down. He's going to get you this call from the outside. I don't think they're going to be able to hear it over the drums of the Wagner band. <laughs> I 
You know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Cleveland gets another first down here to see the Wagner Bulldogs call a timeout and try to kind of maybe try to figure this out and slow down some of the momentum that the uh, Cleveland Tiger Tigers have going for them right now. Coach Muhlenweg from the, the press box calling for a timeout. Here's the pressure put on Rees. Rees able to get away from it. Underthrew the, it. He under did underthrew it. it. Pressure put on by Hawkins and company as uh, – Again, Coach Muhlenweg up here trying to make a call uh, on the defensive side of things. And maybe maybe we do need a timeout as the, the clock is resting right at six minutes with an incomplete pass uh, stopping the clock. Harlan, down by seven, you're threatening to, uh, to tie this ball game. All of the momentum right now is in the Tiger favor. Most, I would say most of the momentum is in the Tiger favor because they were able to get some pressure on the quarterback, make him make a bad throw right there. That can easily start to swing the momentum, not completely, but at least get it moving, and we'll see what happens now. First and 10 from the 25, Reeves from the shotgun. Here's Hewitt, and look at that. How about that for momentum, Allen? That was a great play, great play. That's number 52, Devin Cantrell on the stop. Cantrell and just blew up on that side. I don't even know that he was touched as he came through to get that tackle. Uh, he was there as soon as the ball was there. Dropped him for a loss of about, looks like eight. And that's exactly what I was talking about right there. All of a sudden you get the incomplete pass. You start to shift the momentum. Eight-yard loss on that tackle. Really big third down on both sides here. Third down and about 17 to go now for the Tigers. The Bulldogs looking to flex some more muscle on the defensive side. That's a big-time play by the Bulldogs' Cantrell as Reeves is from the shotgun. Rolling to his right. He's going to throw back to his left. He's got Hewitt. And Hewitt breaks, breaks one breaks, tackle, oh, another breaks tackle. another tackle. And finally, he's got cut first. down by number one, Lawrence Evett. But he ran He Hewitt got the first through. down first. Hewitt ran through at least two tackles there, two would-be uh, sure tacklers, and he just ran right through them. On the, the unfortunate thing here is they can get the ball to the two, get the first down and have another set of downs to try to get the uh, get into the end zone here with five less than five minutes left in the game. According to the scoreboard, the ball is resting at the 12-yard line. It's a first and ten for the Tigers. Reeves from the shotgun. Reeves keeps it himself, and he is still on. Wow, that's a great piece scrambled, of right there. Scrambled, literally scrambled for And we're going to have a uh, – uh, I think that's going to be on the Bulldogs as two, three flags fly in late. I think we're going to have a late hit or an unsportsmanlike conduct late, late in this fourth quarter. Well, I think you can start seeing the frustration on the Wagner Bulldog defense of just not being able to enforce their will the way they want to here. And, you know, uh, sometimes that takes the best of us and we make decisions out there on the field we shouldn't. Yeah, and going back to the play, though, there, uh, Allen, what a great job uh, by Reeves just to uh, – he fakes the handoff, makes somebody miss, looks like he's going to get brought down. All of a sudden – he puts his arm down and kind of army crawls a little bit without without his knees being on the ground. I don't know if that's even possible, um, but kind of forces his way into positive yardage there. Well, and we didn't get an official call from the referee. The down marker still says second down, so maybe it wasn't that unsportsmanlike penalty that we thought it was because, according to the down marker, it's still second down. That would have been an automatic first down. Here's Reeves from the shotgun. Reeves going to take it himself. Reeves – Makes a couple of tacklers miss, and he is in for the score. Touchdown, Tigers, number two. Uh, sorry, that is number number 12. I was going to call him number two. <laughs> number 12 is Derek Reeves, the quarterback, able to shift around and finally dive in for the score. Touchdown, Cleveland Tigers. You know, they say great players want the ball in their hands and make the difference, and that's what he's done in this game. You see the last two drives – you know, he's run the ball several times. His, the passing game, you know, he hasn't thrown it down the field a whole lot. He's kept it to those, those bubble screens and uh, some inside passing. And we have a tied game at 21-21 right now with 4-12 left in the game. And I'm going to go back to we talked about Cantrell making that huge defensive play, put him at a third and 17, and then Reeves hooks up with uh, Hewitt and needed 17 and got about 19. Had Lawrence Evett not made the tackle, uh, Hewitt would have scored then. 
Uh, that was a huge – with the huge play that the Bulldogs had on defense, it was even a bigger play on the offense, Harlan. Definitely, and it's really – that whole drive was really about Reeves and Hewitt most yep. of the time. Um, it was – Reeves making the screen pass to Hewitt, but Hewitt really had to do most of the work there. So he was had to make some people miss, had to break some tackles, did get that extra yardage, and then Reeves kind of does the rest in the read option. Well, let's remember that this all stemmed from the interception from Woodson in the last drive. So let's see if he can shake that off coming in here with 4-12 left. You got the game and even the season riding on this next drive possibly. Bulldog fans at home, Friday night Bulldog fans at home, you need to get on the you need to get on Facebook. You need to start tweeting. You need to start texting. Uh, tell people that we got a game here. It's 21-21, 4-12 left in this fourth quarter. And what a what a fourth quarter for Cowboy Coney Island to sponsor. No kidding, Jeremy. And uh, definitely uh, all the Friday Night Bulldogs fans, go visit them. Uh, they have great food there. And so uh, go partake of that. But, Jeremy, I don't know uh, if you and Alan noticed, but the coaches kept the Tigers on the sideline for a little extra talk there, um, trying to make sure they give them that direction. But – Moved up way closer on the kickoff here. Yeah, right. I would watch the um, – I'd watch for a, a pooch kick. Apparently there may have, must have been some kind of late flag on that extra point because they're kicking from the Bulldogs' side of the 45, and oh. the ball is loose, and, and the look, Tigers, Tigers have got, got it. it there. He got hammered. Wow. I totally missed we – were, we were talking about uh, – Everybody logging on to Friday Night Bulldogs must have missed that there was a, a uh, some type of – it was 15 yards. It was a 15-yard penalty. Uh, wow. And that is – they kicked that from the Bulldog 45-yard line, and that was a great call by the Tiger coaching staff. Because of that, they were able to go with that onside kick. Well, it didn't Bulldog. cost them. It wasn't much of a risk to do it right there. Exactly. Hits on one of the Bulldog players – but the Tigers able to actually recover that ball, and now all of a sudden, 4:05 left to go in the game, 21-21, and Tigers have it here. Four minutes, five seconds. Reeves from the shotgun. We got a late player coming in. Is uh, in the Hewitt Tigers. Looks like he's coming in. Two, one. He does get it off there, Jeremy. Reeves looking to pass, throws it way downfield. He's got a man, and that's similar to. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, I'm not sure wow. about that call. It looks like they're going to call passing interference on the defense, but it was overthrown. It looked like unless he was holding him up from being able to get underneath it. Wow. And that's exactly why right there, though, for Tigers, you make that call. It's big play, big swing and momentum there. They tie the game up, so the first shot they get, they try to go deep on them, and all of a sudden there's a flag. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great offensive call. On the flip side of that, it was a horrible, horrible call as far as officiating is concerned. And uh, we haven't been talking a whole lot about that all game long, but here's two really big calls. Whatever happened on the extra point, and now this, now all of a sudden the Indians have the ball first and 10 on the Bulldog 20-yard line. Yes, the Tigers have the ball in Bulldogs territory here deep, under four minutes now, and they're at the line of scrimmage here in the pistol now. formation. Here's the snap, the throw from Reeves to Miles. Miles has it, but he doesn't get much yardage uh, here he as he's brought down by there. Roman Rodriguez. He gained four or five on that. And right now the Bulldogs – the Bulldogs really need a timeout here. They've got all three remaining. There's three minutes and 40 seconds. They need a timeout to just take a breath here. Well, you can see the defense has their hands on their hips. Their heads are hanging. They, they're just not into it right now. The ball and they've got to get it figured out, and they've got to get it figured out quick. Real yeah. quick. And, Jeremy, on the other side of that, you may not want to use those timeouts because you want to hold those in your pocket if you need them on the offensive side with not much time left as it's winding down. And that's true, too. Is uh, we got three minutes and 15 seconds left. The ball is at the 15-yard line. I think it's you're going to see another five. run. Here's Reeves handoff to Hewitt. Hewitt, and fortunately for Bulldog fans, he was tripped up uh, by his own player maybe, but he was still able to get, uh, well, he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. And looks like he about stumbled it. down and then rolled forward. Maybe maybe lost one on that play. But no, I think you're going to see them run it again. I think they're going to go for a field goal. I think they're going to try to run that clock down to a minute and a half and then 
go for a field goal from there. Well, and we've I, seen Miles on three extra points now, Harlan, and he, he he's has got the leg. plenty of distance. He's got plenty of distance here, and they're bleeding that clock as much as they can. So, Alan, you probably do see a run here. This is the biggest third down of the game so far, for sure. He's from the shotgun. Here's Hewitt. No, Reeves will keep it himself. And a great defensive stop by number 58, I believe. Number 58 for the Bulldogs is, oh, I'm sorry, that's not a number 58. Might be 52. His number was kind of crunched up, so I believe it was number 52. It looks like somebody has called a timeout. I'm not sure which side. Clock has stopped at 2.13, and it looks like it's going to be 4th and 10 from about the 20, which is going to leave about a 37-yard uh, field goal which is not a gimme by anybody's mean. Certainly not in the high school game, Allen. A big time play by the Bulldog defense there as they're able to get him for the loss of that time to cause the, an even longer uh, field goal here. And I think there's some controversy because the Bulldogs took that time out and the clock kept on rolling a little bit after that. And those are precious seconds at this yeah. point. Looks like Coach Condi was having a chat with the head ref, maybe looking at trying to get a few seconds added back to that clock. I don't know if he was successful or not. I tell you what, the, these last four and a half to five minutes of this ball game has, has been really dicey, to say the least. I think that's probably a fair uh, assessment of, what, of what's gone on as far as uh, the uh, really the, the questionable calls uh, that, have, that have come. Pretty clean game so far, and now all of a sudden we've got calls that uh, you just hate to even talk about maybe deciding a game. Yeah, you never want to talk about the referees' flags deciding the game at all. Uh, and there's been some controversial calls, we would say for sure. And as uh, here come the Tigers here, and it looks like they're going to line up for that for field, field goal, goal here. Well, I would. That kid has a, a leg like a cannon. Yeah, this will be miles the T will be placed at about the 27-yard line. It'll be a 37-yard like right field goal attempt. Looks like right in the middle, right in the Miles. And blocked. It's blocked. It is blocked, and here's Evan. Evan Just able to pick it, it up. Evan jumps Woo! on it. The Bulldogs are going to take over on the blocked field goal right there. Huge play by special teams for the Bulldogs. And, Jeremy, special teams has been big a couple times yes, in this game. You both got a blocked sides, punt. Both sides have blocked been huge. punt in the first half for a touchdown. You had the onside kick here uh, just recently, and now the Bulldogs get the blocked field goal and snatch all the momentum and go back the other way. Can it translate to the offense? I, I'm just going to say, Miles didn't have a mile chance to get, even get that. I don't know what happened there. Oh, it there. looked like there was no, like they snapped the ball and nobody on the offensive line knew it. It was jailbreak for the Bulldogs as their hat. There was take your pick of who blocked that. We're not sure who. It was did, the team effort, but the it was entire... four or five. Here's Woodson up under center, first and 10 from the 41-yard line. Beats in motion. Here's Evett. Evett still on his feet trying to get that corner. The line, Jeremy. Evett still on his feet. He's down the sideline. He finally steps out of Gain bounds. Gain of about 15 the on the play. yard line there, Jeremy, where he stepped out. Big-time play by Evett to get and to the And stop the clock. Speaking Gain of the clock. 15 yards, stop the clock, move the ball, move the chains. Two <sighs> minutes, five seconds. And, yeah, he, he did stop the clock. Bulldogs still have two timeouts here. And now we're getting into clock management here as we don't want to leave any clock for the Tigers to be able to respond to this. A first and ten play. The ball is at the 42-yard line of the, the Tigers. Woodson up under center. Beats in motion. Eye formation. Here's Evett. Evett again to the outside. Now cuts it back to the inside. Evett with that burst of speed that Another we always talk about. Another first down. A gain of 12 on that one. Inside Sometimes it just looks like everybody else is standing still. Inside the 30-yard line, looks like it's going to be spotted at the 28 for another first down. And That's nobody on the Wagner Bulldog sideline is sitting down right now. Everybody is standing and cheering. And you can see the momentum has shifted. The Wagner Bulldog team is up on their feet, and they're, they're pumped now. Woodson up under center. There's Beats again in motion. Here's the inside hand. A ball's, ball's on the on ground. The ground. Oh. Looks like he jumped back on top of it there. We'll see yeah, what the, the call signal is. is. Rodriguez. Signal is Wagner Bulldog football. It's going to be Rodriguez. second down here as Bulldogs are able to recover, as we've uh, mentioned. And uh, that takes some of the wins out of the cells of the Bulldogs. But 
of it so far on this. Well, the clock is running, running, and they need to get on it. The clock is running. They are down to the 28-yard uh, line, but with a minute 19 left. We're at one minute 15 seconds now. Wagner Bulldogs 21, Cleveland Tigers 21. Minute 11 Woodson on the clock from the shotgun. All men to the left. He throws back to the right. That's Hayden Ford on a post route. A great catch by Ford. Looks like he got up. the first down as well. Yeah, he That'll did. stop the clock as they move the chains with a minute three left. Down to it looks like the 16. Yeah. He actually, uh, uh, Allen, I'm sorry. He got right to the 15-yard line. That's where the ball is placed. One minute, three seconds. The clock is stopped to reset the chains. And now it started again. We're at 59 seconds, Arlen. 57 seconds and two timeouts. Woodson, Woodson up under center. center. Here's a pitch out to Evett, near side. Evett. He's got it. Evett down the sidelines. Oh, and he is pushed, pushed out. At out. Maybe the one yard line. It looked like he got pushed into the Ooh. end zone there. That was close. Point, that was close. The signal from the referee. First down, Bulldogs are in control here at the goal line. Yeah, I tell you what, by, by Evett's body language there, I don't think that he thought that that was going to happen. When the push came, all he had to do was extend the ball, and he'd have been in a touchdown. Yeah, I don't think he saw that coming. <laughs> so he, he was actually pushed at about the four, and now the ball is at the two-yard line. The Wagner Bulldogs are set up great here. First and goal from the two, 46 seconds left. It's Rodriguez from the Wildcat. Rodriguez looking for the goal line. And touchdown! That's a touchdown. Number 44, Roman Rodriguez. Two yards away for the score. 41 seconds left. Harlan, uh, let's 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 not jump. Put the cart before the horse here. We've seen McGuirt uh, with several kickoff returns that have been exciting. So yes, Wagner Bulldogs just scored. We got the swinging gate here, awaiting the extra point. And now they line up for that extra point. Yeah, they're going to keep it simple at this point. Yeah, definitely. They're going to convert this one here or attempt as Roland comes out here to attempt the PAT. But, Jeremy, uh, on the other side of that, we can't count the Cleveland Tigers out just yet, as you were mentioning. They have weapons, and we've seen that. Uh, but big time. Ooh, that was, big time that was dicey, but it is good. The kick is good. Roland was able to get that through. Man, there were all kinds of Tigers in his face, though. But the score is now Wagner Bulldogs 28, the Cleveland Tigers 21. 41 seconds left to go in this ball game. And Harlan, you, one thing that you don't want to do, we talked about special teams that have come up big on both sides of this. If you're the Bulldogs, if you're, uh, if you're the coaching staff, you're telling Tanner Rowland, don't kick it to number three, Chase McQuirk. Certainly, I think you're telling them that everything you got in that leg, kick it out of bounds. Get, well, I mean, out of the end zone. I was about to say, I don't you think you want it out of bounds. The, out of the end zone, get it out of the hands of number three. I think you're going to see I a squib kick. I think he's got the leg for it, for sure. I tell you. Uh, I think you'll see uh, a squib kick here. I think you'll see it on the ground. Yeah. I don't I don't think I'm, – I'm not putting it in the air. I'm not taking a chance of it going out of bounds. Um, you know, giving them the ball near midfield by kicking it out of bounds is not – right. Uh, you're, you're probably looking the best uh, uh, squib kick here. You're not really wanting a pooch kick because that will give them great field position. Let it roll down there. Let them fumble around with it trying to right. pick it up. Just don't kick it to McGuirt. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little excited there. <laughs> Number 38, Tanner Rowland to kick it away for the Bulldogs. And he's then exactly what we said. He's going to squib kick it. And number 14, if you're a, a Tiger fan, Darren Dale did the smart thing there. Cover it up, get down on the ground, don't cough it up. And don't run any time off the clock, although, wow, that was four seconds. Squib and kick. <laughs> I, the, the problem I, is, in high school ball, that clock is not supposed to start until, until they, they it. touch it. Yeah. So, Should um, be 41 seconds, and maybe if the, the other coach is paying attention, he might be making a, a good claim right now. I'm pretty sure it didn't take Dell four seconds to catch that ball and fall to the ground, but according to <laughs> we'll the take score, it. we'll glory, take it right now. <laughs> there's a first and ten play for the Indians. You no, know, you're going to have to see them go to the air. They still have all three of their timeouts, but they're going to have to go to the air to cover this ground in such short time. Reeves from the shotgun, rolls to his right, throws, catch is made. That's got to be McGuirt. And number three, McGuirt makes the catch, gets good yardage. And if you're in the Bulldog defense, I'm sorry, that was number two, Miles. Miles or McGuirt, you got to know where those players are. 
Definitely for sure, and they're going to go hurry up here as so he didn't get out of bounds. Clock's not running well, on the they first down. For the, uh, Tigers change. have the ball back to the line of scrimmage. Shotgun formation. There's Reeves. Oh. Finds, looks like, oh, no, My incomplete goodness. looking Bundy. for Bundy that time. Just a drop. He had uh, eight yards there without anybody touching him, and he had another three to go. Well, Harlan, he, yeah, Bundy, a uh, classic example of trying to run before he caught the ball. Definitely. Reeves had him open there, as Allen mentioned, and uh, even had a shot to catch it, maybe step out of bounds, stop the clock there. Well, definitely stop the clock, just not the way you wanted to do it. For sure, stop the clock, but no yardage forward. We got 21 seconds to go in the game here as the Tigers huddle up to talk about this one. It's going to be second down and 10. The ball's on the 49-yard line in Tiger territory 21 uh, seconds right now. left to go. And second Reeves and is going to be in the shotgun formation with one running back in the backfield. He's got four receivers. There you go. Hewitt's in motion. Reeves drops back, passes, looks oh, for great his receiver, effort. and it's knocked away by the Wagner Bulldogs defender. That's number 17, Chase Barnett, coming up with a big play there. That's a great stop. He was, you know, one-on-one -on -one there. If he breaks free from there, uh, this could be another uh, long night. But Chase was able to get his hand up in there, knock the ball away, not, uh, not have any penalties or anything from there. Great play by a senior. I uh, believe he's safety position. Now he's playing corner. Uh, Chase Barnett. Clock stopped at 18 seconds. 28-21. The Tigers playing from behind. You might as well say it's third and 51 because they need a touchdown. Here's McGuirt. McGuirt oh, tackles made, and that's going to be right at the sticks. Very risky, Harlan, as uh, well, they, st they so, still had the timeouts. They still have three timeouts, and it looks like they may have to measure this one. I don't know if they call timeout, but it looks like they're going to measure it. I'll tell you what, Harlan. Nope. We have heard since the Bulldogs scored, we have heard nothing from the PA announcer <laughs> at Billy Vessel's Memorial Stadium. Definitely well, it looks like the Cleveland uh, Tigers have called a timeout with fourth and one from the Wagner Bulldog 41. Yep, going to be fourth and one here. We haven't heard much from the PA announcer uh, on the Cleveland side since that. And In fact, Jeremy, uh, I, I, it doesn't make much sense to me, but I'm looking across the way here as they're actually bringing out the sticks to measure uh, here, probably at the request of the coaches on the Tigers' side. I'm seeing some Tigers fans get up and, and kind of walk towards the cars. I, maybe they're calling a night, but we got 13 seconds to go here, and uh, it looks like it's fourth and one, and really it's about fourth and a half a yard, and it's going to be a really interesting play call. Maybe they run it here, call the timeout, and then start taking their shots. They've still got two timeouts, Alan. Uh, 13 seconds. Yeah, you, you can get three plays in there. Maybe yeah. you make the first down here, and then you go for broke in the next two. Well, I think you got you have to get the first down here. Or you're done tonight, or you have no other plays. So, yeah, they're gonna, I think you're going to see a run. Uh, I would not be surprised to see a run up the middle and then a timeout. Uh, yeah, run up the middle with uh, Hewitt maybe just to get that first down. Well, it looks like Reeves is going to be alone in wow. the backfield out of the uh, shotgun formation. And for what it looks like right here, Harlan, it looks like they're going to go for broke right here. And they go with the hard count here, but they're not going to. There's the snap. There's the pass. And it's caught, caught by the Tigers. That's going to be a first and ten big time conversion there for the Tigers. Uh, risky play call right there, but it was McGuirt uh, on the catch once again as we've called his name over and over on all sides of the ball. Special teams, defense, offense, everything. Alan, that only took three seconds as the uh, Tigers take their second timeout. And, boy, Hawkins almost made a play on that ball. Great concentration, Mike McGuirt. Well, I think you're looking at you got 10 seconds, you got 35 yards. I think you're going to see some intermediate passing from here. Uh, probably try to get 10 or uh, 15 yards here. And then, uh, you know, a quick timeout and then go for the end zone. And during this timeout, Harlan, we got to give one more shout out. We may not know what goes on for the next 10 seconds. Cowboy Coney Island, what a great quarter they were to sponsor Friday Night Bulldogs. Absolutely, and we're so thankful for the sponsorship and the help uh, that they provided us here at Friday Night Bulldogs. And so if you're a fan listening and not able to make it out to Cleveland, know that this quarter is brought to you by Cowboy and Coney Islander. Great food. Make sure and visit them. Uh, because they are the reason that it's possible to bring you this incredible action with 10 seconds left to go here in the fourth quarter. First and 10 for the Tigers. They're back to the line of scrimmage. we got a wide spread formation. 
Reeves from the shotgun. Reeves looking downfield. He's six. 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 Roman Rodriguez with a huge defensive play for the Bulldogs. He and came they- untouched off that corner on the blind side. Uh, Reeves never even saw him until it was too late. And now there's five seconds left. And now they've got to go 46 yards. Looks like 48 yards in five seconds. And I tell you what, we haven't seen Reeves. We don't know if he has the arm strength to throw it that far. He might. I'm just saying we haven't seen it yet. Well, early in the first, and I think it was in the second quarter, he had one where he overthrew from about this place. So we know he has the. he's shown the arm strength. I don't know if he has the accuracy with the arm strength. He overthrew the last time. But uh, I guarantee you that Wagner's going to have a little bit more coverage deep this time around than they did the first time up. Well, there's no doubt uh, whether uh, whether we're going to see whether he has the arm strength or not because it's going to be right here. Five seconds left as the Tigers have taken their third and final timeout. Harlan, the ball is resting at the Bulldog 48-yard line. This is it. It's uh, It says second and 10 right now on the scoreboard, but right now it's second down and 48 to go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's second and goal from the 48. <laughs> That's right. It no longer matters that it's second down or whatever. The only thing that matters is this play. Uh, and they because are out of timeout, so this is it right here. This will be Reeves from the shotgun. He's got every receiver imaginable. And, Harlan, I'm going to give you this call. Reeves has it in the shotgun formation. As Jeremy said, five receivers out. He drops back to pass. Here's some pressure from the Bulldogs. Throws it up. Is not going to make it to the end zone here. Really close. Ball comes down. Intercepted by the Bulldogs. They're going to leave Cleveland with the win. 28-21. Wagner Bulldogs find a way to hang wow. on in this one. And uh, Jeremy... There were some moments there where we just weren't sure about this game. Well, I'm just watching the refs right now. The refs are sprinting to the uh, to the field house as the, the Bulldogs filed out onto the field. I'm not sure who made that interception. It might have been Barnett, but no time on the clock. You hear the, the fight song in the background. But, uh, 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 Alan, I don't know if you saw the referees, but they were sprinting. They were off of, out of my field of vision. I was watching the teams as they came out. Man, you know, you almost, almost feel bad for the Cleveland Tigers. They put a great show out tonight, but I don't feel that bad for them. No, not at all, especially with the announcer that we've been talking about. (laughs) Of course, again, we haven't heard a thing from him for a long, long time. Yeah, we appreciate everyone that has logged on for Friday Night Bulldogs, Harlan. They couldn't. They couldn't really, as far as the whole season is concerned, they couldn't have picked a better game to log on tonight. Certainly. Uh, tonight, we did have our issues with audio. I think the video has been there the whole time, if I'm not mistaken. We appreciate you guys staying with us, and this is your reward. This is what we give you at Friday Night Bulldogs. Stick with us, and uh, you see the Bulldogs pull it off 28-21. And, Jeremy, to me, uh, it's almost been the story of the season so far, at least here in the last few games, where the Bulldogs maybe haven't come to play the way that we've seen the Bulldogs play uh, in the past. Well, early, early in these games, the last three games, uh, it's really taken quite a bit of time for the Bulldogs' offense to get going. Uh, you know, it was kind of the tale of two halves right here. Uh, I believe the score was 21-7 at half. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we talked about how strong the defense was in the first half. Well, uh, even though the offense only scored once in the second half, it was the it was really the uh, Tiger offense that we had to talk about and the defense that uh, were allowing some points on the board. Well, I think uh, from, a, from an overall perspective, I think the, the, the team or the side that had the most to prove was the Tiger defense. You know, the Tiger defense had a lot to prove today, and uh, they did it. Uh, they did a, a really good job of containing an offense that scores 40-plus a game and held them to 28. And so uh, the Tiger defense came out to play, and they did a great job, and I'm really hoping this is a wake-up call for the uh, Bulldog offense and the Bulldogs as a whole, you know, giving up 21 points to a, a pretty good team uh, from what we saw. Uh, really 14 points on offense, 7 points on special teams, um, but – you know, like we talked, uh, the first half was a lot of sloppy play from the, the Wagner Bulldogs. Well, and, and, but at the same time, we have to say, and this is, it's a cliche, but uh, great teams find a way to win, and that's exactly what happened tonight, uh, Alan, is the, 
Uh, we did talk about sloppy play. There, uh, we had some some mishaps on the special teams and different things like that. But great teams find ways to win, and that's exactly what happened here. Um, as the as the Bulldogs pull out a squeaker here, as the I th believe it was 41 seconds I think left um, in the in the game when. Uh, Rodriguez scored from two yards away. So Rodriguez came up big. Obviously, Evett came up big. Uh, there were some defensive players that come up big. Uh, we talked about Barnett right there at the end. Uh, Hawkins, Hawkins comes up with an interception. Uh, Cantrell with a huge, um, uh, with a huge sack. Rodriguez with a huge sack of his own. Uh, so big time players that we talk about all season came up with some big time plays. And, again, they found a way to win. Well, I think what's, what's going to be difficult for them is you can't wait till the last five minutes of the game against uh, some of the teams that they're going to place, they're going to face in the playoffs. And so if they, if they struggle through this the rest of the season, uh, it, it's going to be tough for them to transition out of that mindset to say we're going to play all four quarters as hard as we can. Of course, this is in Cleveland. That's about an hour, hour-plus drive. Um, you can throw that into the mix as, as Wagner, I believe, is coming off two straight home games, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that might have been a factor. Um, just different things that uh, we didn't see from the Bulldogs as we typically have seen. We didn't see that tonight. But, again, they came away with the win. Uh, you might wonder where Harlan uh, went. He's actually behind the camera right now as the uh, Wagner High School mass communications class has helped it out with the video. Um, they had to they had to go take care of some things, so Harlan steps behind the camera. But um, it's it, wow, it was just a it was just a crazy night. It really was. It was a great environment to be a part of, and, and hearing our fans from the Wagner faithful coming up and uh, just really getting into it there at the end. Uh, you know, uh, it, it was uh, you could physically see the momentum shift from the Cleveland side back to the Wagner side after the uh, the blocked field goal attempt. And then uh, the touchdown run, uh, we just kind of dominated from that point on. Well, I'm looking at this chat room here, Harlan. Harlan uh, picking up his mic still behind the camera, but uh, Mousebeat talking about wanting to see a little more hustle, a little more urgency yeah. from the Bulldogs. And those are two things, Harlan, that we didn't see tonight, really. Certainly, and that's kind of been a concern, Jeremy, uh, week in and week out here the past few weeks. So just not seeing that urgency. Uh, maybe, I, I mean, I'm just speculating here, but maybe feeling like we got the district racked up, maybe, uh, to a point. But um, a good little lesson here in Cleveland that nothing can be taken for granted yeah. uh, on Friday night in high school football. Uh, and Bulldogs able to escape. And uh, a lot of teams aren't lucky like that when they run into a team uh, on a night like this. But uh, as Jeremy said before, good teams find a way to win. Bulldogs found a way to win. Let's get on to next week, basically. Yeah, let's get on to next week. And next week will be Tulsa Webster, I believe. And then we'll finish out the season with Vanita. Uh, Tulsa Webster next week will be at home. And then we will travel to Vanita for the season finale. Right now, Alan, the Bulldogs are, look, are sitting at 8-0, looking uh, very seriously to go 10-0. But we've still got two games to get there. Well, I think if you uh – you know, you look at all the different levels, high school, college, pro, you know, you don't want to end your season uh, going into the playoffs on a bad note. You know, you want to finish strong and carry that momentum with you into the playoffs. You know, and you see that lesson learned in the NFL where teams are have their playoff spot wrapped up, pull their starters, you know, and then they go into the first round of playoffs and lose because their starters are rusty. They haven't carried any momentum in with them. Uh, they're not clicking the way they were all season. And so hopefully as, you know, I think the, the Bulldogs started off this season clicking on almost every cylinder, and it seems like um, I, I think the phrase is that winning can sometimes breed complacency. And so right now I think that may be a little bit of what we see. I, I, think, um, I think we're harshing on it because we know what the Bulldogs are capable of doing, and we're not seeing it out there on the field. That's a good point, Harlan. Uh, as we – uh, wrap this post game up. We appreciate everyone that's logged on tonight for Friday Night Bulldogs. And, and Alan brought up a, a good point there as uh, we, we've seen what the Bulldogs can do and we, we don't want to see the, the winning. We don't want to see really the domination turn into complacency and maybe taking some opponents for granted. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think it's just uh, it's something that all good teams go through, I think. And it really is a part of the growing process 
uh, uh, you know, just being a high school athlete is learning how to, even when you feel like you've got it, you still got to get out there on the field and, and do it and, go, and not just go through the motions because when you do, uh, it'll jump up and bite you. And uh, so we've seen that before, and we don't want that to happen again for sure. Uh, but Coach Condit and his staff do a great job uh, preparing their team, uh, getting them ready uh, over and over. Um, he's done a great job uh, since he's been here, Coach Condit, uh, of just having a history of doing that and getting his players ready for, uh, you know, all the district games, really every single game, and then really for a not just a run at the playoffs but a deep run. Uh, at the playoffs. Well, and, and just like you said, how about that coaching that coaching job and the players of knowing that it's been a it's been a, a non characteristic game for the Bulldogs and uh, the great job that was from the players and the coaching staff to keep the focus. Uh, you've got a team that you're expected to roll over and uh, and they were keeping it closed, tied it up, and just the the composure that the Bulldogs the Bulldogs showed there. Uh, was was just uh, exemplary. So uh, that's going to just about do it. And, Alan, uh, one last word for the Bulldog fans at home. They're still listening. We appreciate their support and uh, looking forward to next week. Well, thank you. And, yes, uh, another side note next week, uh, First Baptist Church will be hosting a fifth quarter, which is a, a kind of like a youth rally type event. We will be having a guy from Mozambique who will be coming and speaking with us about uh, some of the efforts to develop clean water initiatives there, and he'll be sharing that with us next Friday night after the Bulldogs win against Tulsa Webster. So uh, come hang out with us Absolutely. tomorrow night after uh, the game next Friday night. Tell everybody about it. <laughs> so. Well, we appreciate Alan coming, and uh, that was his last word. And we appreciate him coming and, and uh, helping us out in the booth. Uh, Harlan, one last word for the Bulldog faithful. Well, just looking forward to next week to see what the Bulldogs bring back out uh, onto the field. Uh, looking for them uh, really to show their dominance next week. Uh, that's what we would uh, assume would happen. Um, excuse me, as Jeremy's trying to show me on camera. We don't want to break the thing, but, you know, uh, that's how it works. And so, uh, but again, looking for the Bulldogs to really uh, assert their dominance next week against uh, Tulsa Webster, I believe Jeremy said. And, um, I'm going to predict a big game from them. I'm going to predict a huge offensive showing uh, from the Bulldogs, and uh, I believe the defense is not going to let a whole lot uh, get past the goal line in that game. Special teams is what I'm going to be looking for next week uh, to really make sure that they sure up those things with the blocked punt. Uh, we weren't able to recover an onside kick. It was a little bit of a surprise this week, but those things you've got to be ready for. So uh, for all you watching at home, thank you so much for being with us, and I'm going to kick it back over to Jeremy for his final take of the night and uh, also to let him thank all the sponsors for this evening. Yes, we do appreciate all the sponsors of Friday Night Bulldogs. We've been here in Cleveland, Oklahoma uh, all this night. We appreciate the Wagner High School communications class. I believe it was Yvette Garcia, Taylor Coleman, and Tara Schnitzky. Okay, Tara Schnitzky. We appreciate these three girls that provided the uh, the film all night, and hopefully everything went well. We appreciate our sponsors tonight of Friday Night Bulldogs. Uh, for Alan Muenweg, Harlan Johnson, I'm Jeremy Holmes saying good night, and God bless America.